Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Oh, is, buddy. is here. All right, show uh, Joe DeRosa this clip as Bill gets comfortable. Yeah, this is uh, this makes the me how. Thirty years destroying my body to build that house. And some kid that's nineteen years old lives in that house. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking your wife. Look how sick this house is. Montage of how sick the house is. I miss you. Looks like an Applebee's. Well, I miss you too. <laughs> <laughs> I over there. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I was thinking about Colin Brooke. I heard she was here in town. She's visiting her dad, and um, you know, she hasn't called me. I'm just a little bit, you know, freaked out by that. I really wish she could sit down and take the time to meet you and I together. Yeah. When do I get to see you? When are you coming back? She got a young Hulk. Three four days. Mm -hmm. I bought you a surfboard up here too, by the way. You did? Are you serious? You're such a cutie pie. Oh, she's trying to act young. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. All right, baby. Yeah. I'll see you in a she's few in days. The, be she's in the she's in the beautiful mansion. Yeah, that Hulk fought. Okay, that Hulk right, broke Dave, every bye. bone in They're his body. They're gonna go back to the Hulk, yeah. who's on the water. Here he is. Back to the Hulk. Ah, the Hulk isn't even allowed in there. I can't pet Cookie. Brooke, I can't pull in there. Otherwise, your mom will have me put in jail. I can't. <laughs> I can't pull up there. I just want to touch her for a second. He's feeling the aches and pains that it took to buy that house. Molly, my love. Dude, he's three inches all the short. Bumps. Yeah, yeah. From all those yeah. years. Look, all they the can only just look at the old dogs. Ugh. And now he's not crying. <laughs> and now Hulk's crying. Oh, wait, that's Brooke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's crying, Dad. I hate this. Uh, she's crying, brother. I was just going to say that. <laughs> what a killer. Your mother, brother. <laughs> <laughs> They're all crying. That's correct. With their Ed Hardy boxers. <laughs> oh, God. Just weeping by the house. Is that the brother or the boyfriend? Everyone's the brother, brother. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's not. That's, that's awful, man. That's not her brother. Oh, uh, divorce. But it's bullshit because they filmed it for TV because she could have fucking petted her old dog. Yeah, and of but course. But they, they had to make it even more dramatic. I don't know. Restraining for order? Uh, yeah, and he's not The gonna... daughter isn't allowed to touch the dog? Get the fuck What's he going to get thrown in jail for? He didn't beat his wife around. He just cheated on her. Who gets a restraining order for cheating? I don't know. If she, if she uh, has uh, the house and he gets on that land, that's trespassing. I don't know. Really? I don't know how it works. I just know everything in divorce well, sucks dick, and it's uh, all about uh, the guy getting screwed. So. Someone just has more money. Hold on. Someone, yeah. someone yeah. just sent me the an guy. article. The guy. Someone <laughs> sent me an article <laughs> that uh, Linda McMahon got 70%. Of what? Uh, in the divorce. Yeah. Linda McMahon. What? I mean, uh, uh, Stephanie? Uh, uh, oh, okay. uh, yeah. You, you uh, Linda flustered. Hogan, sorry. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. there going, wait a minute. When sorry, did that sorry, happen? Jesus. 70%. She got 70%. This Fuck guy just sent me the you. article. There's no fucking way to to actually do the math there. What? How does she get that much money? It says so much for 50-50. Uh, Linda received more than 70% of the couple's liquid assets, but the pain doesn't stop there for the Hulkster. His ex also received a 40%. Ownership stake in Hulk's companies, plus she receives a three million dollar property settlement. Oh, how does he not kill her? What, the, ridiculous. What, did, what did she do to earn that? That's Nothing. A, she spread her legs like a fucking whore. But he must have had a shitty lawyer. Yeah, he no, got to. Like, I know the guys like he's get out. It sounds like he said, "Look, I just wanted to be over, brother." Yeah, yep. I know guys get fucked in divorce cases, but he yep. he must have had a shitty lawyer. Yeah, on top. hired Colin Ferguson. <laughs> That'd be great. What a lawyer! That's uh, she got a lump sum of seven point four four million from the couple's investment else. account. Ah, <laughs> uh, come the, on! The, the remaining two point nine seven. <laughs> the top. So listen to this: she got seven point four four of the investment accounts, and he got two point nine seven. How is that fucking possible? That ridiculous. That isn't even. He made right. all that money. It's ridiculous. Yep. You know what's great is to bring shit up like that on on while you're doing stand up, and as you're doing it, you hear the women in the crowd go, "That's right." Oh, yeah, That's yeah, right. yeah. I mean, don't uh -huh. ever do it. Because the hatred you'll have for women will go through the fucking yes. roof. Right. No fucking embarrassment from it. Yeah, how do you not just yell cunt at that point? Yeah. They're not I mean, embarrassed. If I was on a date anything. with somebody and something, you know, they flip it around and I was with someone going, That's right. That's right. I'd be like, Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you for that lock the door test. <laughs> 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 the fucking word. Yeah, they they just fucking you. You that's the thing with with women in the in the audience a lot. Of it's like you'll talk about shit. Like I have a bit about women aging, and I talk about it. And I'm like, yeah, you have you an age. idea, Joe. Let's be honest. Yeah, <laughs> you age. <laughs> Something you present. An idea. Yeah. Yeah. Before you yeah. give us your little stand-up comedy. I'm class. not gonna do oh, the. It's like that time when I was down the Elks Club. 
<laughs> Bill, I wish we could just hang out for once and just be pals. <laughs> Come on, Joe. You know this is the way we show affection. Uh, that's so funny. I got a bit. He got an idea. But uh, oh. uh, you yell it. And you fucking cunts, you all just turn immediately. It's so funny. <laughs> I'm hanging in there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do want to hear this. No, I'm not going to tell you. Opie <laughs> looks like he's preparing for some Oscar winning role over there. What <laughs> <laughs> that castaway beard? What's going on with you? Nah, it's uh, my horrible beard. I like it. You look at a little, little, yeah. little uh, Greg Opie Hughes as Ernest Hemingway. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he became Ernest. Yes. He wanted to be called Ernest. <laughs> oh, Opie oh, Hanks. It's, he's always in character. <laughs> as long as he's got the beard. It's not staying. If you need to know, it's, it started with the whole Patrice thing a while ago. Oh, it was a beard of woe. Wow. A beard of woe. <laughs> well, it started with, like, I just stopped shaving. And then yeah, I said, why would you care when something like that? I have, my, I have my beer of woe. Wait, on TV. If you need to know, the real, you need to know the real answer. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Richard Branson. <laughs> Richard Branson. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, an adventurer? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's the real answer. Let's but, host, but, but host Joe, a show please. from a hot air balloon. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Proud to announce Opie Airlines uh, premiering uh, this week. Walk a wish. <laughs> God, where's your idea? Let's go. Uh, but it's, it's, I'm not going to. Uh, the well the plan is. What? Well, well I'm going to get you. Got, you got to write it off. Yeah, I'm sure awesome. I'll get. Yep. <laughs> There's plenty of beer jokes coming it's my way. I, you know, speak to Bill's point about chicks ragged in crown. I just I do a joke about how women age worse than we do, and then the women always do get it, mad. Joe. I'm not gonna do the bit, Joe. Well, but Joe, I just don't like you saying I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna speak to Bill's point like you're two congressmen debating. <laughs> Fighting over. Right. Yeah. I was trying to tap dance my way out of a trapping. <laughs> it didn't work. Yes. Now, what is your stance here, Joe? The chair recognizes William Burr. <laughs> <laughs> so. But it's women get mad at it. It's like I'm, I'm taught. This bit is written because of shit that women say. I, I'm not just up here being. So it's just they just eh, like they, you ma like you're making the shit up. No, Joe, don't give up. Yeah, they just want to be. Point. My point is, they just want to. They just want to run their fucking mouths. And uh, they're wow. lippy, and I don't like it. Oh, I think <laughs> they need to learn their place. <laughs> I got to say, I saw there both of you guys at Carnegie. It was obviously Bill Burr's show, but uh, Joe, right. you, you fucking killed. And uh, speaking of women aging, Bill Burr's material on plastic surgery. Holy fuck did that had I was oh. howling. Oh, thanks. I don't want you to do it. I'm just giving you a compliment. Well, I could never follow Joe's yeah. material. <laughs> you're fucking... <laughs> your new shit, especially on the plastic surgery, that had me fucking howling, man. Oh, thank and you. And Carnegie Hall dug it. You had a great... Thank you. Well, I, you had a great I show I wouldn't there. have been there without this show. You had a great Ooh, show. That's yeah. true, man. I, that's all... This whole area. Right. I sold nothing until I got on this show. <laughs> I showed <laughs> nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. I was doing... Uh, and, and I just listened to you last night. Uh, you did a podcast on Black Friday that was really fucking funny. Oh, those fucking idiots. Just go there on Tuesday and yeah, buy yeah. less. Go yeah. in like a gentleman and just be like, I'll take one of those in that color. Why yeah. would you get involved in that? They don't Why have the sale on, on Tuesday. They the do have the sale. Yeah, the price well, don't saying, change. Yeah, but you, this year especially, they started the Black Friday deals way before Black Friday. Yeah, Joe, I'm saying you obviously can't afford it. If you have to really put yourself... Ah, you, yeah. you're, 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 you're fucking health at risk. I disagree with that a to, little to, bit. To go buy a, uh, a Foreman grill, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Why don't you just... Do you think that by, by buying that, you're now going to be rich? <laughs> I went to uh, I went to one at midnight. I hate how you already knew what you were going to say yeah, and did. you didn't listen to Wait, the rest of that. Wait, you didn't listen to a word. Wait, you <laughs> completely. <laughs> <laughs> you did Black Friday, Joe? I went at midnight, like Thanksgiving oh, night. Oh, my God. I had nothing to do. Why? Look at you. I had nothing, I had to, nothing to do. So you I went to Walmart? Anything. <laughs> no, I didn't go to Walmart. I went to, I, went to, I went to the Joe Jeans outlet. I got a bunch of pairs of Joe Jeans for like 60 bucks each. You couldn't fucking You're be in it. show business, Joe. I'm not at the level where I get free shit yet. But I would so, have money. I mean, you could have got those jeans on Tuesday. <laughs> Joe, yeah. Yeah. I think Bill Burr's right. When, when I, just, Joe, I was bored. Joe, Joe ever becomes an icon, he'll be one of those people who goes in for the voiceover and is stealing mints. <laughs> 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 you tight fuck. Are I, you uh, is Joe, Joe? Chisler? 
Totally. No, 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 no. no. Joe, like, Joe thinks it's all going to go away I'm not at any second. I'm not a chiseler, but I do enjoy a deal. I'm not going to lie. I like a nice <laughs> bargain lie. when I find one. <laughs> Did you fight? But I, won't, I won't bargain hunt, but if I find one, I get genuinely excited. Did you oh, fight yeah. the crowds for Kansas your jeans? City. No, it was empty. <laughs> <laughs> but you had to go at midnight? Ugh. Dude, I was literally sitting on my mom and dad's couch at midnight on Thanksgiving. I was wired. I had nothing to do. And they're, they live by these outlets. I was like, I'm just going to go over and he see what it's shit. all about. And I went he over. He planned to make yeah. his entire fucking visit for his parents yeah. around yep. this goddamn city. Yeah. He's trying to make it yeah. sound logical. Yeah. You I was wait. wired. When I'm yeah. wired at 12, you know, I'll what jerk else? off. Uh, it's some way I'll to wind down. Sandwich. Not go to the store. Yeah. Holy shit, John Jones right. is making his way down the hall. He's here early. What? John Jones, man, he's the UFC fucking, champion. He's yes, the fucking like man these days. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah, but what? you got to get Joe in the seat. He's yeah. early. Should right we over there? Do we have Jesus. to break for live reads, or are we good? I think we're good. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, oh Joe's getting the fucking ejector seat. No, get it, get 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 Joe another. Just how much for those sneakers, Joe? Did you get those down there too? Here, Joseph. <laughs> Take your coat. <laughs> yeah, beat it. Take Bill, your is, coat Bill is surly today. Take yeah, your coat what? and your breakfast you and know, beat Bill. it. Just beat it. Joe, so I, I just, I don't like pontification. <laughs> really? Did you ever listen to your own act? Oh, hey! Joey DeRose! Joey DeRose! Jody! Hi, uh, Joe. I want to see if that mic's on. Joe, were you talking to that real fast? Oh, sorry, yes, yes. Hello? Okay, I got you. Is it on? Holy Did shit, John Jones in the studio. Yeah. How you doing? Pleasure. Hey, it's a man. pleasure to meet you, sir. He's in fighting shape. Obi and Anthony. What's up, man? Fuck that. John Jones, man. Uh-uh. We, be you we, became, in... we became instant fans of yours. Oh, instant. Yeah? Well, when, which when... fight was it? Shogun fight? Uh, which one was it? Uh, it was before Shogun. It was before Shogun, and we before wanted you in here badly. I was at the Shogun fight. That was... It in was New Jersey? Person? I was sitting behind his family. Uh, oh, it was poor, really, poor yeah, they were not happy with God. Uh, <laughs> These tough Brazilian guys who were like part of his crew and his family, and they were weeping. Like, there was, the, wow, like, they really? couldn't believe he had lost, yeah, because he really beat up Shogun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was funny, I was actually nervous to go to Brazil because of that, you know, he's like a hero over there, you know, like an icon. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I'm quite welcome there yet. <laughs> oh, um, man. He beat up there, Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, uh, yeah. 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 It wasn't even a close fight. Like, if, maybe for the first few minutes of the first round. But I watched it again yesterday. Oh, it was humiliating. Humiliating. <laughs> yeah. To lose your belt like that. Like, you know, mm -hmm. if you lose your belt, you want it to go out maybe yeah. in the fifth round. Not like that. We're not talking about losing belts. Here. Dude, All right. Yeah, man. you're fighting uh, next week. I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> Rashida. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited, man. Lioto's a tough, tough dude. Were well, you supposed to fight Rampage, but he's hurt and you can't? No, I, I fought Rampage. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, Rashad. Rashad. Rashad Evans. Yeah, me and Rashad, we've, we've both had, like, uh, injuries and... The fight's just not panning out to happen so far, but uh, it'll happen. I'm sure right after this uh, Lieto fight, it'll be uh, that's either a, That's Rashad a fight Evans. everyone wants to see. Yeah. yeah. John yeah. Jones and Rashad Evans, holy they're, shit. They're calling that the Ali Frazier of our sport, you know, yeah. that comparison of just the, the, the hype that's behind it. So you had saying. no problem with Rampage. Were you surprised by that at all? Um, You know... You know, I, I, I knew I was very confident in my game plan. I knew that my best chances of losing the fight was to stand in the pocket with him. The guy has devastating knockout power, left hand and right hand. Um, he can hit any angle. So, you know, I knew if I stayed out of the pocket and used my longest range weapon, which is my leg kicks and my, my push kicks and things, that I'd be fine. So right. um, I was confident, but I didn't know it was going to go like that. I mean, yeah. he, he actually only hit me one time throughout mm -hmm. the whole fight. Yeah. Which is nuts. Is there ever a moment in a fight like that where you're like, do you know you're going to win? Or is that sport just so crazy that you can't even allow yourself to think that? Yeah, you, can, you can't even allow yourself to think that. I mean, one. <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> <laughs> right? you just down. Yeah, no way. You got to be on point. At all, at all times of the mm. fight, you know, crazy thing with me, I think I have ADD. So just keeping that level of concentration and focus. <laughs> you start looking at people in the 25 crowd. rounds. Yeah, I'm like, what is this going to be over, you know? So. I'm not going to have ADD. That's, <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. He gave it up to you, too, Rampage. He never does that. He's like, this guy's the real deal. He's great. Like, when he was talking at the end, he really praised you. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, know, it was nuts because uh, before the fight, you know, Rampage... He kept making fun of me. He had a thousand different names to call me. Uh, every media outlet we did, you know, he was down on me and down on my game, down on my coaching staff. So I was like, you know, 
kind of, I'm really starting to hate this guy, you know? And uh, so uh, after the fight, there was a, a photographer caught a picture with my foot literally inside of his mouth. <laughs> and uh, I was like, you know what? <laughs> you know, I just wanted, it was just so iconic, you know? Uh, but because, because he was so respectful right after the fight and gave me the props that I deserve, you know, he, I, uh, I decided not to make that the uh, display picture on my Twitter page. <laughs> <laughs> is that going to make you want to hit a guy more? Like, or does it mess you up? Like, because Ali would get in people's heads and, and then they couldn't fight him because they were so mad. If a guy is just shit talking you, does it does it does it kind of put so much anger in you that it could throw you off? You know, it it, it doesn't not it doesn't work for me like that. You know, I try to keep it all, more about the competition. You know, let's let's save all the trash talk and let's see who's the better athlete and the better combatant. Um, but with Rampage, you know, he just kept insulting me so much. It um, it didn't cloud my mind or, or throw me off, but I just, it made me want to finish the fight more. You know, I didn't want the fight to go to a decision. I wanted to try to knock him out or embarrass him. And that picture was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> I didn't see the photo. Yeah, and that's because I never put it up because he was respectful after the fight. So I said, you know what? Let's shake hands and walk our you separate ways, like, man. Yeah, I'll let you slide you on let that him one. Slide. Yeah. I'm trying to think how to ask this question without you giving up any sort of secret. But what is the most like? I don't know. What hurts the most? The elbows. Everyone, everyone, I watch that. I always think for some reason, just laying on the ground, that ground and pound. Somebody just yeah. dropping yeah, yeah. those elbows. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's my signature. The ground yeah, and pound. Yeah. yeah, every time I get my opponent down. And start raining elbows down on him. You know, when he gets back to his feet, he just doesn't seem the same. It takes a lot of people's will. <laughs> yeah, what level of training can you do where that. you can handle that that Charlie horse kick? Ooh. An Olympic level one. I can't believe you guys yeah. can still stand up. Ooh, I was in a cab suck. yesterday and Bobby punched me in the leg and I <laughs> limped into the restaurant. <laughs> that was, that's Bobby. Yeah, just you know, sitting there, the half a jab. <laughs> some some traditional martial artists, uh, they do uh, body conditioning, and that's where they literally take turns kicking each other uh, oh, in the legs, and, and they they do these drills where they bang their forearms together, and, it, and after a while, your body starts to harden and and uh, you know not be susceptible to damage. Right. Um, you know, <laughs> I haven't taken things that far. I just rather yeah. get out of the way. So uh, <laughs> so there is ways to condition yourself, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think imagine. it's very common right now. In oh, our sport. Right. Can't imagine. Yeah. Well, my oh, shins are pretty. Taking those shins are pretty conditioned. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Your elbows are are, but that's the worst thing in, in MMA is his elbows. Yeah. There was one you hit Shogun. I think you spun around and hit him with a left elbow in the face. Oh, like, yeah, you, you're impossible elbow. to figure out because and big guys when you get in on a tall guy, at least his reach can't be used. Right. But you just put your knees and, and elbows in the guy's and, face. Yeah, and we talked about one on one. We talked about that move on our show, and your arms are so long. It, I swear to God, it almost looked like it was a fist, and it was his <laughs> elbow coming around. Right. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, I love it. See. I found myself being at a disadvantage whenever guys are too close to me because I have an 84.5 inch reach. It's the same leech as Lennox Lewis. Uh, so, you know, I had to figure out what am I going to do to defend myself when these guys are all up on my grill. Right. Uh, so I started working tons of Muay Thai, tons of knees, tons of elbows, and more importantly, tons of takedowns from the clinch. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's become a good uh, defense and offense. Hell short yeah. range. It seems like there's no there's no good way to approach you for, from a fighter's point of view because the closer you get, the more likely you are to take a knee in the face. And that's just a horrible, horrible mm -hmm. place to be. I'm yeah. glad it appears that way. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> We're, it's fighting. We love how you fight. It's exciting. Exciting. Right, Jimmy? Yeah, it's unpredictable. It and really is. Everything that people think you're going to do, you don't. Like, again, in, in the Shogun fight, there was one as it's, you went for a leg lock, and then he's laying on the back, and you just hammer fisted him back in the face. Oh, ah, <laughs> how embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. The least expected is hard to block. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It yeah. seems like you train like that, or is that just your natural instinct in fighting? Um, a lot of it's training, and then a lot of it's just having an open mind and creativity. You know, I'm always meditating, I'm fighting, and thinking about new openings. And you know, I think I'm a, I'm a really big, uh, a big student of myself. You know, I watch my own fights a lot, and I and I realize, man, you know, if I had more awareness, maybe I can add that in there, or do that next time, and do that next time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I take that mindset and I bring it to the gym, and I start working all the things that I could have done. And, and uh, then once you get to the fight, you know, you just find yourself uh, way more openings and way more uh, ideals. And you just start throwing all types of creative things out there. When was the last time somebody didn't know who you were, just like a civilian, and started giving you shit? <laughs> Uh, and what you do know, you think during that moment? You know what? That's funny. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't happen too often. You know, whenever I'm out, you know, I'm usually out with a few buddies, and I'm always like one of the more fit guys around, and and I'm always I always have a smile on my face. So, uh, you know, people want to start with me. It's just it's just rare. Oh, all right. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would love that. The that smile would be the, That would be oh, the greatest yeah, yeah. YouTube video yeah. ever. Oh, oh no kidding. Hey, stop, buddy. Stop. 
motherfucker, you yeah. fucking get dog. off me, get yeah, off me. There he goes. Yeah, <laughs> that's what guys like us fantasize about. It's like if we if we were like that, it's like the moment the guy said something, we're like, excuse me, right. like I would be reacting like I react as a nerd now. But, like, yeah, it's just not the way you carry yourself when you can fight. I think. Yeah. I know. When was the last time you were afraid walking home? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I can't remember. Superhero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny because uh, uh, I train in Albuquerque and uh, me and about five of my teammates that train at Jackson's MMA were out downtown one night and uh, a guy was getting jumped. Uh, he provoked the uh, the whole fight, but he was getting jumped by uh, a group of guys. So it was, it was about five against one and it was me and my five buddies uh, huh. that were out, you know, we were watching this happen. And uh, one of my teammates was like, yo, let's get over there. You know, let's let's go get him. You know, let's go stand up for that guy. I'm like, well, first you got to realize all these guys are drunk and the guy that's getting jumped to try to take on five guys. So right. this is his own problem in a way. And I was like, could you imagine a YouTube video with us <laughs> pro fighters? Oh. It looked like the Power Rangers, like, <laughs> <laughs> beating up these idiots, you know? I'm like, dude, come on. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you got to let that guy learn his lesson. Yeah, well, the police came before we know it, and it, it, it wasn't that too bad. He actually fought them all off. But did all like, right? Dude, like, we're doing spinning, spinning crescent kicks. So like, <laughs> yeah. Who are these guys? The guys are just windmilling at you, <laughs> yeah. like, trying to get a punch in. <laughs> <laughs> so you have no temptation to step in like if you saw I always thought like what would I do and build a funny bit on it you see like a domestic violence episode or whatever what, what would you do and it's like you want to help but it's scary to, to, to think it would be turned on you would you jump in or yeah well uh, my last the last time I, I stood up for someone and used my martial arts um, was the day of my title fight in Patterson New Jersey <laughs> you know uh, me and my coaches were meditating at a park in Patterson and uh, we hear a couple screaming, run over to the scene, and uh, there's an old couple with their windows busted out. They're standing next to their car, their car crying, and uh, they said they had just been robbed. So me and my coaches, we catch the tail end of this guy, and, uh, and we chase him down. You know, and me being probably in the best shape, getting ready to fight. You know, four hours later, uh, I catch up to the guy first, and, and I late kick him and take him down, and uh, hold him to my coaches come, and we all subdue this guy. And the Patterson police, they come and. And uh, they arrest the guy, and we get this woman, what happens to be her GPS system back. And she was just so grateful. God, you know, it was all over TMZ. Jesus, that guy's guy's he's got to still be telling that story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, two old people, easy target. Easy <laughs> fucking target. Out of fucking nowhere, this goddamn superhero shows up. Wrong time, wrong place, man. I love it. His whole body felt like an elbow. <laughs> I, I, love that, uh, I love that fighting is so secondhand, or firsthand, you just like, yeah. Yeah, the day of the fight, I just got into another quick fight. If I fought, if I kicked somebody, I'd be down for a month. Yeah. I'd be like, that's it for me. And you, you just whatever. It's just like small, you know. It's business as usual. Day yeah. at the office. I mean, we all have our niche, and, and fighting's what I do best. But you know, it was cool. You know, to use like my my gift in a positive light like that, and mm. to show people that you know mixed martial arts uh, not only builds character, but you know you can. You know, it's just so much yeah. greatness to that. You're not the Cobra from. Kai. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're, you're, you're in the, the, the friendly dojo. Right. <laughs> How silly is it, this misconception that it's so violent when the fights... No way MMA fighters take the abuse boxers do, because you're not oh, getting no punched way. for 12 rounds. No way. And you're going to make a lot of boxers upset out there to hear, but it's just true. You know, it's factual. MMA is actually one of the safest sports you can play. You know, you, uh, you got football players. You got these 230-pound men running as fast as they can and clashing into each other. You got the linemen. Um, you know, blasting each other off the whistle, play by play. Those guys get tons of concussions. Um, you guys, you got, you got, uh, what, uh, boxers, you know, boxers, you know, the primary goal is to knock each other's heads off, right? Round after round, you get knocked down, you get an eight count, uh, eight count, right. stand back up and get another concussion. You know, these sports are pretty dangerous, you know, um, you know, I'm a champion and, and, and out of my last four fights, uh, I've been hit about five times in the face total. Uh, which is a nut statistic, and uh, you know a lot of times fights are won by leg kicks or mm -hmm. submission. There's a there's an honorable way to just say I've had enough by tapping out, you know. So um, where I guess it looks brutal because of the blood and the ground and pound and everything. Uh, common injuries we go home with is maybe a, a cut over the eye or or a black eye or maybe some bruised ribs or anything. But I mean it's it's not nearly as dangerous as a lot. The of The only sports. one that looks crazy is after the dude's knocked out and you guys are so quick. That you get those other 17 in is that that rap is right. 17. Really? I'm just saying. Really? 
just, you know what it is? I put myself into, into the, who I would be in the fight, and it's always the loser. So I always see myself uh, laying there going, uh, stop, stop. Yeah, it. hoping uh, someone would just, get there in time, right? And you just see your job opportunities going down, like manager of a restaurant, waiter, busboy, <laughs> eating out of the dumpster. Please get to this guy. That's funny. You know what? A lot of times the fans are so upset because they feel as if fights are being stopped too way too now? fast. Yeah. You know, the referees, mm. they're aware. You know, they, they know our backgrounds. They know our stories. And and and, uh, and they also know that our wives are sitting on the front row. Uh-huh. So, uh, you know, they stop the fights pretty mm. fast. Do you ever get annoyed when some crowd, when there's really some strategy going on, when it's down on the ground and they start booing? Does yeah. that ever bother you? Yeah. You just want to stop fighting and be like, do you understand what the fuck I'm doing down here? <laughs> Don't try to arm yeah, this you is important assholes. too, right? Yeah. You right. know, that's the biggest difference between uh, the Good Pride question, organization man. and the UFC. You know, Pride originated originated in Japan and the Japanese uh, fan base, they had so much more respect for every aspect of martial arts. You know, they really carry that, that martial arts demeanor and energy with them. You know, UFC fans are a little bit more about the kickboxing and the big knockout. They just want to mm. see some blood and some knockouts in America. Yeah, they yeah. don't want to see two guys, you know, rolling around on the mat. Right. Uh, so, you know, the UFC fans, uh, they're really starting to, to pick up and realize that jiu-jitsu is a, is a cultural thing. It's a thing that has lots of history, and they're really starting to understand what guard passing is and full mount and all the different positions. And they're having, you know, a lot more respect for it nowadays. So it's not as bad as it used to be, but hmm. they're learning. We're getting there. And and it's got to be said, youngest uh, UFC champion, John yeah. Jones. We 23 yeah. Uh, 24 now. When you want, I mean. You see this beard? Well, I'm getting oh, you look like a much more distinguished gentleman. But now, when you won the belt, you were 23, I, I think, right? I won the belt, yeah, I was 23. Okay. And yeah. and you've only been fighting in the UFC, what, four or five months now? Actually, years. I, I uh, yeah, I uh, my first martial arts class was four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah, which is it's nuts to me to think of how far. Who's the it. poor bastard who locked up with you? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll, honestly, t- I'll take the new fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was some uh, some kid from uh, from Boxborough, nope. uh, Massachusetts, and this, this kid had no clue what he was getting into. Uh, <laughs> right. No, and I, I I mean, how long have you been in the UFC though? Uh, you know, just about two years. Oh, okay. Just about okay. Two years. Wow. Been moving fast. I'm so passionate yeah, been about the sport. Fast. How did you take martial arts for? Like, did you? What did you do before that? Were you fighting your whole life, like boxing, or just? No, um, actually, you know, I wrestled. I wrestled in oh. high school, and I wrestled in college two years at Iowa Central. And uh, you know, after I graduated from school, I just had this void. Like, I felt like I wasn't living fulfilled. You know, I had to continue competing somehow. So I ended up joining a jujitsu school. Got pretty good at jujitsu. My jujitsu coach encouraged me to go with martial arts full uh, full speed ahead and and that's what I did and you know I just I had this vision that I would be a champion one day and I carry myself like that and I trained that way and meditated on fighting you know study fighting as much as possible and I found myself catching up to guys who have been doing it 12 14 wow. years I met you briefly uh, me and Bob Kelly actually it was it was the very famous Frank Mir it was the Mir Lesnar hey. fight oh yeah uh, you were, and we were back we just said Reed Harris introduced us very briefly and Bobby goes that guy's going to be a champion after we walked away he goes he's the best Bobby fighter in shit. shit yeah Bobby's really uh, he great. really knows his shit yeah he's you know, not he here today uh, intuitive are you uh, you're from Rochester originally yep yep inner city Rochester when did you leave I moved from Rochester in 98 oh 98 I think I was about 10, 10 oh, okay 11. you've never had a garbage plate then I have Nick Tahoe's. Yeah, oh, yeah. I love garbage. <laughs> I try plate. to explain the garbage plate to these guys. Yeah, it's been years though, man. Honestly, it's been a long time. I probably shouldn't be eating too many of those now. Yeah, no, the Nick Tahoe uh, garbage <laughs> plate is legendary. Up there. Oh yeah, it is just a slop of no nope, people. If you haven't had one. No, it's so you're hard to have living. discipline. You know, it's like I try. I do. I do, three three days in a row. I've done elliptical, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> you can treat yourself, Jimmy. Treat Dude, yourself. Is, is there an applause button? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Three days in a row, and I figured, why not have dessert last night? I don't know how you guys. Can I we talk to Jimmy. He likes to treat himself. I do. He he likes to treat, treat himself. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, he's a nice man. But what he did is, is he looked and he just looked down at my stomach real quick and then looked oh, back up man. and laughed at me. <laughs> Oh, three days. I bet you he yeah. never treats himself, John Jones. Yeah, when do, you, when do you, we, we always ask fighters this, when when do you binge? I mean, there has to be a time where you kind of let yourself go for a week, or do you... Yeah, definitely. Um, right after a fight, usually, I take off about a solid month. Oh. You know, no training. 
You know, I try not to even watch a fight and mm. just, you know, maintain like somewhat of a normal lifestyle. Mm. You know, I am 24 and all my friends are around that age. So their their priorities are way different than mine. The responsibility <laughs> levels are way different than mine. And uh, sometimes it's just good to go back to my hometown and just remind them that I'm still one of them. And, you know, hang out, play video games for several hours with the guys and just, just sit around and chill, you know, mm. and kick and let them know that none of this has changed me. So When you, uh, when you start to train, how, how long do you train for a fight? I train about three, three to four solid months of all nutrition, you know, three times a day, four times a day. It's a lot of taxing on the body and on the mind, man, the pressure of knowing that, you know, if, if you were to lose, everyone's going to have that in their DVR. Yeah, how do you fight that? Yeah. Oh, you wow. You know what I mean? That's, that's what really gets my you foot out of bed in the morning. Way. Oh, it's, it's some oh, pressure. Fuck. Yeah. That's what's pressure. always blown my mind is just sitting there training and you just know there's somebody else training to kick the shit out of you yeah. at like the the, the, the highest the level. level. Yeah, it's it, way different than like, you know, being on a basketball team, like, oh, we lost the game tonight, you know, you know, that sucked. You lose the game and you can be hurt or, or the embarrassment, the fear of being exposed. Yeah. I think that's really what it is. You and know? it's not a team either, really. Even it's though you, you have your crew, it's you you it's like almost like stand up. Like I always got jealous of people in bands. That if he went out and it wasn't going well, at least you had three other guys there. Oh, the drummer was right with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could yeah. always kind of go down. But, yeah, it's totally uh, it's totally on you, man. All improv, man. Jesus. And you can't control, uh, you know, you can't control what your opponent's going to do, you know, reactions. You got to control your own body, your own energy, and his. And it's just one big masterpiece. And you fight only, what, two, maybe three times a year, right? You know, I've actually fought four times a year. It's wow. It's the first time in our sports history. That's a lot, uh, right? That champions fought in three world titles. And, and uh, you know, three world titles in one year. Wow. So, yeah, I've and had a busy sitting on it. 2004. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever have a problem with uh, the family of someone you beat down as you're walking out of the ring where they ever get, like, upset? No, you know, I haven't had that issue yet. UFC fighters are pretty uh, pretty down to earth and pretty cool, most mm. of them. You know, um, a lot of times, you know, you find the guys at the same after parties or sharing a drink and, hey, you know, man, you kicked my butt tonight. You know, uh, you know, good job. I'll come back and get you next time type of thing. Mm. So there's there's very little animosity after a defeat. You know, we all respect each other and know what we go through to to get ready for a performance. So how can I wish you not I could respect be that, a guy like that? That respectful in defeat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I could be that respectful in victory. Yeah. <laughs> if he kicked my ass, I'd go, oh, next time. But if I won, I would be an arrogant prick. <laughs> Stink. <laughs> Smack you in the face. Get away from me. <laughs> Send your wife over here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like Mr. T and Rocky yeah, yeah. Three. <laughs> no, because that's what I was thinking. Hey, woman. Hey, woman. <laughs> I was thinking that shit because, you know, when you're tell, telling jokes on stage, ever do that and you see the boyfriend start getting mad? Oh, yeah. But you literally beat down the boyfriend in front of his wife or girlfriend. That's just a whole nother level yeah. of complete domination. So oh, I yeah. would figure that there would, they, there would be some sort of animosity. Give her a wink. Did you like that? Yeah. Huh? This is <laughs> yeah, how a real man throws a knee. Hey, Rashad and you had a, a history together, too, like of training together. And everyone says that that's a pretty good matchup. Um, or, or harder for you than, say, fighting a Rampage or whatever. And what, what is your situation with him? Uh, it's funny. Yeah, we ever tried ever as we trained together for about a year, um, you know, and we obviously had our falling out. You know, he got injured, and the UFC offered me the chance to step in his spot and, and challenge the champion for his belt. Uh, when he got injured, he said, listen, John, you're like a little brother to me. There's no one I would rather see uh, take my place for the belt, uh, you know, challenge than you. You know, I believe that you're ready and that you're going to win this belt. So, you know, best of luck to you. Came to my, my dinner, you know, with my family and closest friends and, and gave me this spiel. And I said, okay, cool, man. You know, and our friendship was tight. You know, I had his blessing to go out there and win the world championship. I don't think he expected me to win it, maybe. So, and I mm. actually won the, the championship. <laughs> and his tone changed pretty fast, saying, oh, if he was really my friend, he would have never stepped in. And, and I'm like, hey, listen, I'm a young man trying to pursue my dream. And I had a, there's a job opening. And you gave me the blessing to take this position. And now that I'm doing so well at it, you know, now I became the enemy and I become the traitor somehow. Um, so, the, you know, for the people who follow the storylines pretty closely, they, they totally understand that that's exactly what it was. And uh, so, you know, now he's he's doing all this these interviews telling people that, you know, because he trained with me, uh, he can crack my my code and he he knows the best ways to beat me and mm. and he's seen me quit in practice and he's and he knows my openings and all this stuff but what he doesn't realize is that I've only been competing for four years Rashad's have been he's been competing for you know eight years or maybe ten years so with the experience come many tendencies and my game is elevating by the month 
So I'm not the same fighter that he competed against when we were training against mm -hmm. each other. And, uh, and where he feels as if he knows my tendencies, I totally know his tendencies because of the fact that not only do I have way more footage to study, but I've trained with him as well. So uh, I'm excited for when that fight takes place. I'm more than confident that that uh, that I'll do exactly what you know that I've been doing. You know, studying these opponents, knowing my enemy, knowing myself, not being naive to my downfalls and weaknesses, and just uh, and just playing, you, the, playing the game that I love. Can you give us an Ali prediction? What round? Uh, What's it going to be? Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, I usually don't give predictions, but. For Rashad Evans. Well. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. From, from, from Rashida for the Saturday. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, yeah, exactly. It's probably not smart to look past Leo. No, Rashida. that's what the Tyson looked past Buster Douglas. Big mistake. Yeah. You never want to look past the next uh, guy. But yeah. at the same time, the Rashad Evans fight is inevitable. It's, it has to happen. Yes. The UFC fans want it, and it's going to happen. So um, obviously, I'm not looking past Leo, though. Um, but for the Rashad Evans fight, I'm definitely predicting a knockout. Um, mm. And Lyoto, I would just say I'm going to go out there, have fun, play the game that I love, and uh, and do my best, like always. By the way, did you see the great advice I just gave him? That's all I would offer in training camp. Hey, remember Tyson Douglas? <laughs> That's all I would have to say. <laughs> I offered you nothing. You Thank God. My, you can be my hype man. <laughs> yeah, go on. Tyson Douglas. Douglas Tyson. I just keep saying it different. Mike and Buster. <laughs> Bring up one of the most famous fights that there's no way he doesn't know about. I know. It's just, there's no way that motivates any fighter anymore. It's 25 years ago. But uh, it, I can see where it would be hard to look past one guy to another guy. Do, do you think with you and Rashad, because we had him in and he didn't speak badly of you, but uh, is it harder to fight a guy who is a close friend? Like, do you almost need something that makes you willing to, to go out and kick the shit out of him or him you? Yeah. Well, the thing about me and Rashad is that, you know, we're not, we're not close friends by any means anymore. You know, there's been lots of words uh, said between us. And, uh, you know, I'm honestly... I'm honestly kind of over it in a way. You know, I just want to see the competition. You know, same thing with Rampage. There's so much talk going on. I just want to see who's the better athlete now. Um, but we're, it's safe to say that there, there's no friendship there at whatsoever. So it'll be business as usual when we get in there. I'm sure the first time he swings at me, uh, I'm like, okay, let's, uh, <laughs> you know, let's do this. Let's do this. So wow. would it be harder to do if you were still close? It would, be, it would be harder to do. You know, I don't think the kickbacks on the expert would be very hard uh, because I kickbox my teammates all the time for practice. Uh, but one thing I don't do in practice very often is ground and pound my teammates. You know, <laughs> yeah. ground and pounders always practice on a, on a big bag on the floor. Right. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've never elbowed a friend in the face, and uh, that part would be hard. But, you know, swinging, swinging for home runs on the feet, you know, <laughs> I, I, that'll go a lot easier. See, if I was Rashad, that would be a, a ploy I would do. I would say nothing but nice things about you because it may, even though you would maybe still win, it would make it harder for you. Mm. Like on the ground, you'd like, you know, you remember that shit I said? It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to make yeah. eye contact with yeah. them, make a little sad yeah. face. How's our family? How's our family? <laughs> kids all right? Yeah, you have an elbow in the throat. I, I was watching that too, and, and it, it was, you were covering, and you were allowed to do that in mixed martial arts, cover the mouth. Oh, yeah. So you can't breathe. And it's yeah, like, that's old school. Yeah, you know, wow, you can breathe is. through it, but uh, it, it just disturbs the breathing, your breathing pattern, and it's just, it's a very uncomfortable feeling. It kind of makes you feel like you're drowning under there a little and bit. And you're so constant, I'm sure you're so concentrating on the fact, like, I gotta breathe, I gotta breathe, that you're not really thinking about what you mm -hmm. have to be doing, like yeah. throwing punches or getting yeah, the fuck counters, out of there. no way, you're trying to focus oh, on getting your man. breathing pattern back. Well, he was on That's his back, brutal. and you, you're so long that your legs are open, it's like it's hard to, to, to grab, le it's mm -hmm. impossible to get John Jones off you, and you had your hand over his face, and when he finally got rid of that, you just put your your elbow and the ref had to keep saying oh, on the face not the neck not the neck because your elbow is kind of uh, stopping his head <laughs> right, right. So it was terrible <laughs> terrible beating you make it sound so brutal <laughs> no but it wasn't it was it, it wasn't uh, anything unnecessary it it's was a just... beautiful thing people oh, let me ask you, this. <laughs> you ever watch those shows on people going to prison and that type of stuff that they'll show inside. Like me, those shows are absolutely terrifying to me going, there's no fucking way I could survive in there. Do you Do you just watch those? That's like a comedy. Oh, you going to try to shank me? Are you serious? Yeah. You and how many cellmates? What are you going to do with that thing? Really? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So, yeah, you, you, so, if you're you talking like, uh, what is it, Oz? Is that what the show called? Oz, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, like, literally, like on like uh, National Geographic, where they'll go into San Quentin and yep. you just see, you know, you just <laughs> see these people, you know, some people having a good time in there, some people not having such not a good so time. Not so much. I haven't really <laughs> fell in with a gang or anything. I was just wondering. Uh, was well, a skinny redhead white guy? I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'd be, I'd be, I was yeah. joking on my too. podcast. I would be exotic in prison. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, <laughs> exactly. That's I awesome. Mean, I don't even try. I just tie my shirt off at the waist and just pick one guy that looked like he could kill everybody else. Hey, be like, oh, I, hey I take care of you. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you know, I, I, just realized, I just realized uh, I couldn't shit. do it. I don't know how I'd fight you. I think I'd just kill myself. <laughs> no, I got no, I remember I came up, I would attack a guard. Because I figure at the end of the day, at least he's not going to rape me. You know, I'll just true. take the beat down. And, and you're guaranteed he's going to look the other way when you are getting raped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is true. Hey, that's the yeah. asshole that hit me. Yeah. Fuck up. Literally, <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> they wouldn't rape you if you're exotic, though. They would all try to woo you with desserts. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep taking cigarettes, see if I can buy my way out of it. Come on, guys. Come on. I got some commissary here for you. Oh, shit, I went to San Quentin with Kenny when we were in San Francisco. Uh, um, and, and they said that Liddell had been there not long before we were, and they said the place went fucking berserk oh, for him. Like they oh, just the applauded UFC, and screamed. Like, yeah, they all love these guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, my God. He walks in with that mohawk. That, they must have felt like they were in a movie, like they were going to take <laughs> over the prison or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw uh, Chuck recently, and, uh, you know, Chuck is known for his that mohawk. That's his yeah. signature thing. And uh, he has a wife now. Is he get married? She gelled it mm -hmm. and curled it. Oh, shit. And it wasn't quite right. Not, not no. quite that uh, intimidating Chuck, look. That, Chuck, you know, I looked up to you, Chuck. <laughs> what is this curly lock? <laughs> was it wasn't thing. blood sport Chuck anymore? It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> Chuck got Hollywood. I was, I was a little disappointed. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's so intimidating. He's still my yeah. brother. We, we've had him in here a few times. He's All you guys are intimidating, obviously, but Chuck Liddell takes the cake. He fucking breathes like a bull. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <sighs> it's hard to get a reaction from him. That's the ice man. We, but you don't want to hear here. He loves us, but you, we don't know because he's never really shown any emotion. But you don't want to hear Liddell going, "Come on, don't use those soaps. She'll kill me." Right, right. You know, nobody wants to. I know. <laughs> exactly. Come on, it's not <laughs> worth it. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he deserves it though. He he's paid the role for guys like Hell himself. Yeah, so yes. you know what. Wear what you want, Chuck. There you go. Yeah, and if you want to curl your mohawk, dye it, and... dye it pink if you want. To. <laughs> Chuck, no it's one's gonna say it to his face. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Jimmy, I, I think maybe if you could take a little bump uh, somehow. What we what do, do, do is we we do this thing where um, like I'm I'm not a fighter. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I really had to say that. that. Amazing, no, no, right? I know. I just. But uh, I always have the guys, we've had, uh, well, they'll do something on me. Like, uh, we've had, uh, Kane has done it, and we've had Fedor. Like, a lot of, uh, Rashad put me in, like, some floor move. I, I don't want to, like, Anderson kicked me lightly. He, he, his hurt the most, I think, because it didn't hurt as much in the moment, but I had a headache mm. for two hours. Um, because I'm not used to being jostled. You've done about 10 or 12 of About 10 or 12 fighters have put me. something like that. Do you yeah. have good health insurance? Uh, uh, I do, actually. Okay. After. So <laughs> I, uh, it's, no. it's a split-second thing, like, like... Y he taps within a split second of these oh, holes. That's no fun. Well, it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they all they all let me go very quickly, except Fedor did an arm thing on me, and he kept. Uh, well, that was oh, a he translation. Gave, he problem. gave a little more. No, he understood because I tapped, and he laughed, and he smiled, and then he tightened up again, and, <laughs> and then he loosened it, and then he tightened up again. Very unpleasant. Uh, yeah. But the recommendation people have been like uh, twittering me. What's the, what's the? It's D A R C E. How do you spell that? Uh, the Dorse. Oh, the the Dars. The Dars. Okay. The Dars. Yeah. And what, what does that entail? I don't know. Ah, well, let's see it. All right, let's do it. Well, what is really? it? Really? I'm actually not the best at the Darst choke. What is your What is your favorite choke? Hmm, favorite choke. I was actually planning on spinning back kicking you. That would have been... <laughs> it, it, I really, I, I literally would be afraid that I would die, but I would love to take a punch. I just couldn't do it. I, I just know oh, that it would be on. unpleasant. I spinning control. Dude? Look, he, yeah, yeah. He's, he's confident, Jimmy. Where would you kick come me? On. Right in the solar plex. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, because you, you'd feel bad. Your foot would smush in at my stomach. It, you don't need that. I'd take it maybe in the... <laughs> It would just be embarrassing. Um, yeah, you might actually get a, hurt. How about a good leg kick? Okay. Get a leg kick. Yeah. Sure. Leg kick. You're going to be walking funny for a while. I know. I would take it. I would request oh. mild, though. Not to. I can't, I can't think of John Jones' kick for real. Mild. Yeah, like I have to. Salsa. I have two legs. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. You're, <laughs> you're <laughs> devastating, devastating legs. Yeah, we've seen your kicks. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. At least leg I don't. kicks, lady and oh, ladies my. and gentlemen. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Here we go. All right. Oh, shit. Jim All right. Norton. Yeah. Yeah. I got a little leg kick. You ever thrown a leg kick this early in the morning? I have it. Five and nine. Think. This is like a singer. I remind him of one of those bags that he uses. To just, just, <laughs> just don't pull anything, please. All All right, right. Where, where are you going to go? Just so I can. Uh... All right. So I'm going to get you right around here. Oh, that right, already looked painful. Oh. Right there. Okay. Oh. All right. So you might want to brace yourself. Not that hard. Okay. Wait. wait. All, right. All right. Can you get the get it? Okay. Good angle. Right what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ, Jimmy. All right. Perfect. Hands up. Cool. Oh, do I have to do that? That seems combative. How about? You want to close your eyes? <laughs> no. Uh, I don't. I don't want to be combative with my hands. Go ahead. That seems good. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are we going? 
Uh, right here? Yeah. All right, here okay. we go. Oh, no. One, two, and three. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was a delayed pay, too. Yeah. Oh, Judy, don't go down. Don't go down. Oh, don't go down. oh yeah. I never oh. went down, right? I feel like I have to shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was all shit, and too. Oh, that was the worst one ever. Oh, is that, is that, yeah. <laughs> The best leg kicks are when you don't hear the noise. Wow. Yeah, you just, that's just all, all the earth. Straight to bone. Dude, the all the weight oh, going on and everything. And that was just T-ball speed, too. Oh, yeah, that was, that was, that was just Jimmy. a little. Yeah, oh, that God, that's a great Jimmy doesn't picture. know if he wants to keep standing or sit down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The visual oh, of that on tomorrow. my phone Fuck is. That. Wow. That, you guys got to look at this on my phone. It's Jimmy's entire body in the frame and then just his torso. That's all you can see. <laughs> It literally looks like a giant oh just coming in and kicking Norton in the leg. Yeah, I was expecting to get like a crack or a snap oh, or something. No. Oh, that no. was just that all thud. power mm. thud mm -hmm. into oh. And where did it hit you, Jimmy? In, right in the thigh. In the right thigh? In side, was it yeah, like a Charlie Horse feeling? Already. I have yeah. to piss. <laughs> well, Jimmy, oh what, what kind of pain is it? What kind of pain is it? I have to puke. <laughs> no, it almost, okay. it almost instantly takes away from your cardio, don't you think? Oh. Did, you get, uh, did you get woozy? Are feel you like, like, I feel like I'm gonna puke. Faint? Oh, really? Yeah. It's gonna hurt so good. Uh, he kind of uh, likes it. I think Jimmy secretly yeah, likes you're, this you're shit. You're pale. You're pale right now. Oh, I do have to pee though. Jimmy's into the S and M. Why don't you go? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're ready for a break. Really I think. Like, he's a, All right. Jimmy's I'll, a funny we'll take gimp. a break. Wait, Jimmy, we'll pee, right? Jimmy's oh, green. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you guys splash some water on your face. <laughs> yeah, your color's a little weird. He's like gonna throw up. Oh, I'm gonna go pee. You ever do that where you hurt yourself and you feel like you're gonna throw up like Don't you're falling your knee or something? <laughs> That's how he no. feels. Now, we, uh... now I see why Rogan loves the leg kicks. That took any fight out of him. Oh, I like the look done. Done. Look, that... he's limping down the you know hallway what? to go to the bathroom. Uh, he's he's done about a dozen of these. I think it's over after that today. was it. I, I think he's not doing any more. That was it. That was the one that got him. Literally. I loved how he thought that initial pain was the pain. Yeah. yeah. One three second he went ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! And the best way to get it out is to rub on it, which only hurts worse. Really? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. gotta kind of work it out, out I guess. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna wow. be a, a big time pain. bruise, man. That's a good one. Jimmy man. does not look good. Tweet me a picture of his leg tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, what are you on Twitter, Johnny uh, Bones? Yeah, at Johnny man. Bones. At Johnny Bones. Yeah. J o n n y b o n e s. I start following you today. Yes. <laughs> all right. Johnny Bones on Twitter. Let's all follow John Jones. What's your Twitter? Uh, Opie Radio. Oh, easy. I yeah, I'm actually the. I got a little video. I'll uh, I'll I'll at Johnny. That Bones. was what was that? Was that like eight percent speed? Would you say? Uh that was about a. Uh... 15%. 15, percent. Oh. double digits. Yeah. Oh! That's pretty oh, God, that face and everything. He got <laughs> some great still shots. You guys see Jimmy's still face shot. in that. Is, he's just like, ah! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> we'll be tweeting all that shit later. Classic. He'll, he'll, he'll tweet it with your name so you, you can check it out. Oh, We got great pictures. You guys see the it, video that Sam took, too. I got the front. I got to oh, commend him. Funny. I would have gone down. You would have went yeah, down? Yeah, that would be it. Jimmy was leaning on the console like, oh. In for fear pain. that the fact I didn't, he would do it again. Oh, I should have kicked him harder. Uh, <laughs> no, no. That's all he could take. Uh, he, he's hurting. Believe me, he's in the bathroom right he's now hurting. just about crying, yeah. splashing water on his face so it doesn't faint. get a free one. Man. And it looks slow, but it must, have been, it must be like if a car hit you at like 10 miles an hour. Yeah. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Right. That's not going that fast. Right. Trust me, it hit him deep. <laughs> oh, I, I man, really focused yeah, yeah. on the shin bone Does digging that, right into the appropriate you spot. You hit and then straighten your leg out. Yeah. It's like all that just is pushing. I don't get how you guys kick each other basically shin to shin. And yeah. that doesn't. That's that body I, conditioning I was telling you about. That getting hurt. Uh, getting yeah, how kicked do you build up shin. anything in your front of your shin where it doesn't hurt uh, you? Oh, yeah. It takes a long time to, no, to get used to that. Uh, the guys in Thailand, they kick trees. They kick these. Oh, oh man, yeah. that's crazy. But they, they can't walk by the time they're 40, right? <laughs> Uh, no, no, Are actually, right? it's just strengthens your, your, as long as you're not hitting with your knees and you're hitting at, uh, an appropriate part of your shin, okay. uh, it conditions <laughs> your shin, and, and uh, <laughs> it's amazing what the human body can get used to, really. You can't get used to the foot trees. stomp, though. Foot stumps, no, those are, those are all fragile bones. <laughs> and pretty much, uh, no most guys don't that. do that, right? Most guys uh, don't do I the I actually do it, I do it. You do uh, it? But, you know, it's really not as effective as people uh, may think, because the heel of your foot isn't really that hard, you know? Right, uh, yeah. So the yeah. stumping, it's more annoying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying that. Like, are you God. serious? Oh, and you God. guys, you know their heels are like a Timberland. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Steel. Like an axe handle. A um, martial arts <laughs> heel. Yeah. It would work Top if you had like, a nice stretch uh, End of my toes would explode. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting the wrap up, so. Uh, what happened?
Oh, we got to get Jimmy first. Uh -oh. Did he puke? No. You puke? No. Okay. You know what? I should have kicked you a lot harder. Oh, no. <laughs> that was really good. Like, uh, Dude, no, no, your I color's to, back. Yeah, your your color got a little a weird. I'm not used to taking that kind of impact, and I know that's not nearly as hard as he could have done it. Oh, no. No. But he's uh, bummed out because we, we just showed him the video. He's like, ah, I should have hit him harder. Oh, no. I, can, I, we, I, I, can we try it again? Let's go no. other legs. What do you say, ladies? I would, I would, have, I would have thrown up other on leg. you. I'm amazed. I, and the reason I do that is I'm, I'm such a fan. I'm amazed by these guys that they can take... That, like you did that in a gentle compared to what you. Well, could he do. said it was about fifteen yeah. percent. But 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 dude, can you imagine a hundred. But imagine, and his motivation was, I'm trying to take his belt. Like, John, I, and, <laughs> John yeah, if you did it hundred yeah. percent, yeah, and to you talk someone, shit about him too. If Sorry. you did that hundred percent to someone like Jimmy, would you break his leg? Would, uh, that, would like, that break a bone? He probably wouldn't break, uh, but a deep it, it'd be bruise? it'd be hurting real bad by uh, by five minutes after the impact. I would probably pass out. Yeah, you'd yeah, probably, you'd probably want to be walking on it. Yeah, yeah you'd I, probably want to go to the hospital. See, the thing is, <laughs> at hundred percent, you you wouldn't even see it coming. Oh, you know, so just oh. imagine the, someone swinging a baseball at your uh, at your side I, nerve. without even knowing. Jeez. You're yeah. just like, "Hey, how you? Oh, fuck!" <laughs> Kenny got me a bag of ice. Thanks, buddy. I'll put this oh, on my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Were you bruised from that, Jimmy? Uh, uh, he will. By the time John Jones is in the elevator, I'll be bruised. He will. I, really, be. I didn't even he kick wants... him hard. Put that on your badge. <laughs> 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 Could you bleep that? Okay. <laughs> I, on, the, on the video, I'll just say this was only 15%. Dude, and I got he, uh, Frankie he Edgar hit me. He gave me like a little left in the arm. And, uh, oh, what a bruise I had from that. Well, he wants to see the bruise, so you got to tweet him. Johnny uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Johnny well, Bones. Absolutely. <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Bones. I swear to God, I'm, I'm so like, I, I, like if he, I, he wanted to see the bruise, I was ready to just drop my jeans in the studio. Well, I, I don't think it's bruised yet, You'd though. be doing that in prison. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, it's they just don't like, give you ice in prison. <laughs> <laughs> you see these things, but you, you never know what these guys are dealing with. Right. Yeah, it's amazing like. to me. We, we have to do the oh, old wrap-up, oh, unfortunately. Okay. Oh, shit. We've been looking forward to this for a while. Uh, yeah, uh, we're fans, man. Hey, we're big-time fans. Thanks, yeah, man. I used to be a fan. Um, <laughs> you used, uh, used to be a fan. No, I, I, hey. I'm rooting for you against Machida this Saturday. Um, let's, let's plug the... I the, think he's the, my favorite in uh, the UFC right now. Yeah, it's hard to like anybody more, yeah. honestly. Well, thanks, guys. It's hard just to. how you fight and stuff. We just love it. I appreciate it. Uh, it's Machida this uh, coming Saturday, live on pay-per-view. It's Johnny Bones on Twitter. What else? And Frank, well, also, Frank Mir is fighting uh, Minotaur uh, Nogueira, and, uh, and Ortiz is fighting again. He fucking yeah, just doesn't just, stop. I know, right? Against uh, Antonio uh, Ruggiero Nogueira. Which one is uh, Little Nog? I always, that's, that would be uh, Antonio, right? Yeah, okay. Ruggiero, he's the younger one. Right. He, he'll be fighting Tito, and then uh, Minotaur Nogueira is the older one who will be fighting Frank, uh, Frank Mir. Mir. Yeah, so it's UFC 140, December 10th. Check it out only on pay-per-view. What weight do you fight at before you go? You're... Uh, I'm light heavyweight, so uh, yeah. I compete at 205. 205. Okay. Right now, I'm about 220, so I have 15 pounds to lose this week. Because the standard and silver comparison people get, but he fights at like done. what, 180? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's how is that strong, done? Amazing. Strong dieting, strong dieting. You like, wear those like that glad bag those, running suits. Suit. You know, yeah. I try not to do too much of the sweating. It's really not good for you uh, in the long term. Uh, but you know, the day before the fight, the day of weigh-ins, I, uh, I cut about four pounds of sweat, uh, which is pretty easy because you know with. Uh, Peter Light, maybe an IV or something. You know, you can, you can get it all back. Jesus, that's amazing. Uh, you're gonna, but you're yeah, lose just strong 15 diet. pounds this week. You know, you I, was a, go... I was a wrestler throughout high school and college, so I, I think I've uh, uh, kind of developed that yeah. level of discipline to uh, walk away from the cheeseburgers. And yeah, things. yeah. So wow, unbel Jeez. unbelievable. You that... almost made me throw up from a leg kick. That is, yeah. a, wow, that's a fucking I really amazing. Wish I would have kicked him harder. Uh, oh, I couldn't. Uh, oh, to see him just that would been the greatest vomit. Oh, he kicked him and he just projectile vomited. We would still be. I kind of wish it would have looked cool. We would still be laughing. Yeah, but that that was a fucking <laughs> wow. I say you guys have me on after the fight, and I kick him in the other leg. What yeah, do it. Yeah. Why not? I mean, just put me a, a celebration of your big victory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. No, because he'll be a little surly after the fight too. And uh, <laughs> don't lose. No. How about after? The, yeah. If you lose, then that kick is going to be ugly. <laughs> Jimmy, you'll take your leg Jesus, off. How do you take that in the face? I, I don't how get. Fuck the guys take that. I just don't get it. They don't take it. Superhuman. That's the key. Well, John Jones. Kids have not taken. Hope you're a champion for a long time, man. I really Absolutely. mean that. Uh, you're Thank a great you champion and, and great spokesman for the for the UFC, and uh, you were great on the Tonight Show when you, when you did Leno. Oh, that was awesome. So, uh, Thank you, man. Yeah. I really appreciate cool, man. it. John, Happy. thanks. Hey, proud to be a New Yorker. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you, man. Good All luck, right. John. All right, John. Good luck. That was awesome. We got Bill Burr in studio still. Joe DeRosa's floating around here. Uh, Jimmy's uh, back. I am in pain, man. And John Jones. <laughs> what a nice guy he is, too, man. I, like, I, I literally like him a lot. I don't know why I have to say literally first. Yes.
Oh, man, you are really uh, aching that I leg, almost huh? threw up. Like, I almost yeah. threw up from that. And I realize it's because my body is not used to taking blunt force impact like that. Oh. Maybe right. on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he had put four fingers on my ass, I would have laughed my way through the entire segment. Where did it hit you? <laughs> <laughs> he hit me. Right above the knee? No, 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 no. He didn't go close to the knee. He did it in a place where he knew there'd be no real damage. Up on the upper, like the strongest part of your leg. Oh, that's going to be a like great The Charlie bruise. horse place. He did it where yes. the Charlie horse oh, is. That's going to be a great bruise. The fucking I light can't wait. heavyweight <laughs> champion. Frankie, did I show you the Frankie Edgar picture? No, you never, a, I never saw that. I, I Twittered it. He uh, he gave me dude, a little shot in the, in the arm, like a little, little fucking... But these guys punch. Mm. That's like a melon. <laughs> and dude, I don't know how anybody like these guys. I know that they're conditioned, but when they're up against the, the cage, there's a guy standing there. That's what they're doing to each other. Like when they're trying to like get out of a clinch, they're just they're doing these leg kicks and these knees, the fucking face and. And, and constant. Like, imagine you, you oh, felt that. God. Imagine feeling it again and then again Dude, in the same place. What I just felt. About one of those at 100%. At 100%. Oh. And then, and then and meanwhile. And then they do it over and over again after that. And yeah, he's continuing was, to try to do it. Yeah, like how Rogan, you know, always talks about those leg kicks. They're so starting to wear them down. I've seen oh, a few fights where you just keep hearing the slap. Yeah. Of the guy's oh. shin against the dude's leg, and even and those guys after like probably like eight is when they start to start leaning. Yeah. I, every every off. Oh. I can never handle it. We, I love that guy, though, man. Johnny, John Jones. Hi, oh, buddy. Oh, my God. You got a big from... bag of ice on yeah, his I leg have to. now. He's, yeah. Only because, uh, you know, I don't want to, I, I want to be able to walk today. I have, yes. to, I have to, you know. Yeah, you, you oh, man, that's going to hurt. When I, if, I, if I take my knee, like, you know, remember when you're a kid and you do the cannonball where you tuck your, uh, your knees in? Uh -huh. If I tuck my knee in, why well, I couldn't just say that I had to mention the cannonball like a faggot. If you tuck your <laughs> knee in, uh, it hurts. Like, I can't tuck my leg all the way in. That's only going to feel worse as time goes <laughs> of on. Of course it is. And like tomorrow, after sleeping and waking up, it's just going to be. I would guess by pain. the end of the, well, he's icing it, but by the end of the show, just sitting down. That's yeah, yeah, I've, it's going to freeze up on you, lock up a little bit. Icing it is smart, though, right? No, not really. Don't really. be. Doesn't, doesn't help. <laughs> Don't be. What do you think, Joe? <laughs> what? What do you think from where you were sitting? Uh, the guy's amazing. I had to shit so bad, though, through the entire interview. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't focus. That's why I had to leave. Wrong. My stomach hurts. So this guy's talking about choking people down to the ground. And I'm just like, my tummy hurts. Like, I got to oh, shit. You asked that one question. It kind of went around and around in a circle. And I heard you be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah fuck it. I got to shit. <laughs> I couldn't get it out straight. Did you see the kick? Yeah, no, I saw that. Oh. That, But what I was trying to ask you, I don't think I was being clear when I said, how did it, how did it hurt? Mean, I mean, I know it hurt a lot, but what kind of pain is it? Is it shooting pain? Is it just like unbelievable ache? No, it's 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 a, it's it's your whole body says uh, fall down, <laughs> get everything out of your system, vomit, yes, vomit, and it's that it's that tingly. I'm glad I walked to the bathroom. I just I really did have to piss the whole interview because we didn't break before John came in. Yep. So I did have to pee, and I'm like, let me just walk down and pee, and I splashed a little water. I was fine by the time I pissed. I, I want to okay. see him do it to Derosa. Oh, DeRosa oh, would man. cry. You, for some reason, <laughs> you're, you're, you're built for pain. I think you get some sort of odd right. pleasure out if you feel closer to the fighters. There's something there's something in it for you. This kid here, I'm telling you, his glasses, just the whole thing. I just realized we were on the air. <laughs> uh, what, you, you told that shit story thinking we were just uh, off the air? Yeah, I don't care. I just yeah. thought we were on a break. Oh. <laughs> when I walk in the That's what this whole like Joe, Joe just really just puts it out there. He doesn't give a shit. He's like, oh, no. just on the air? Oh, what? <laughs> why we, why we all had headphones on and we're talking into microphones? I, I, I oh, wish it was better, though. I blew Bailey J. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say anything, guys. <laughs> what, do you want to make everyone jealous? <laughs> <laughs> look, oh, at Jim, look at Jimmy keeping no, but, his legs moving. Yeah, I am. I'm just fucking... Uh, I'm just moving my right leg. Here's what it is. When an athlete's training, sometimes oh, we take a few bumps. Am I right or wrong, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can't argue with you. He said the best thing, that, when you were guarding, he said the best thing to do was rub it out. He said, but that's going to make it hurt worse, but that will get it out. Yeah, like like to rub on it. Like, oh, like a, a I rub it out every night. <laughs> deep tissue massage. <laughs> yeah, probably right. He should have kicked Carely in your dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that I, hurt he right there. He really would have kicked me in my solar plexus. He might have he knocked the wind out of me. Oh, that would have been. You'd have been... That that would, I'll be afraid that would kill me because he, he's a young guy. John's twenty four, and again he's he he's I I he's to me much scarier than a guy like Anderson. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Anderson Silva probably kicks as hard, if not harder. 
I love to hear you go. Oh, 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 oh. But Anderson. <laughs> oh, 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 with oh, all that, oh, oh. With all the wind knocked out of you. Oh, my God. I couldn't take, but I knew better than to take it there. Not oh, against, yeah. Not yeah. that. I don't want to get my fucking ribs broken. You or... took it with poise, man. If I, if, if I got hit like that, I'd literally sell like one of the three stooges. I'd be like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That like, was, uh, by, by, by far, yeah, that was like, the worst one. By far. Jesus Christ. And he did 15%. By far. What's his name only did, what did he say, 10? Uh, Anderson Silva did about... Um, uh, but we didn't have Anderson because he speaks broken English. He's, 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 Portuguese, he's Portuguese. We we didn't have as much. We had a good time with him, but not as much of a... It was more question and answer instead of just hanging yeah, out and goofing yeah. off. You should keep upping the percentage to the, no. see what point we get where you actually uh. puke. All right, I took yeah. 15. Your color, John Jones. Gotta go 20. Hey, I literally, I was gonna vomit. Your, your system, whatever happens Dude, your to your system. Dude, your color changed, man. Yeah. The that color was, left oh, your yeah, face. It was just white. You were kind of a whitish green. It was there was funny. a green hue to you. But you do feel cl not Fuck closer that. to the fighters like I, I, I could do that. But to understand, like the respect level goes so much farther through the roof. Because, Absolutely. Like, you take that fucking punishment from this guy. I just want to hug Loyola Machida. Like, what are you doing? Stay home. <laughs> It's fucking terrible what you guys do. Hurts. Everybody wants to do that. You want to go to a baseball park and have someone just don't hit me in the head, but throw a fastball. Let me just just throw it like at three quarters. Let me see if I can get around. Yeah, that's it. boring to those oh. guys. He wanted to kick you full. He wanted to kick you at least fifty percent. Nah, he wouldn't. I don't think he would. I don't think he wanted to 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 put me out of commission for good. But you know, he's he's one of those guys. Again, he's he's in fight mode, man. He's fighting in a week. He's in fucking fight mode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Sykes. Yeah, that's Isaac. Like, or imagine a, a fastball <laughs> pitcher just radio. What nailing one into your back. Dude, I, would, I would rather have wow. taken it in the stomach than where yeah, you took no it. No way. No, no way. Yeah. You'd have I would have thrown up. I would have yeah, thrown no, up. No, no, I rather would have. Because I feel like you can tense that up. You can exhale. The shit you can do. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't tell kill. Houdini that. I, I can't. <laughs> but but that, that nothing fucking hurts. Dude, Charlie Beyond horse, the yeah. balls, nothing hurts like the Charlie horse in the shit. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, sim it's yeah. simple, but it's such a strong muscle in, in your body. And, and, and I have, I've have been told by a lot of massage therapists, I have great legs. I have very strong <laughs> legs. He really has inexplicably Mr. Olympian, like, midget legs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. He really has shapely, in it, shape it's fucking... It's the calf muscles. Dude, my calves are fucking... They're terrific. I have beautiful calves. They're pretty amazing. They're a thing of beauty. Bowling yeah. pins. I can yeah. argue with you, Jimmy. They're beautiful. But can I see? Can you all your voices go from, like, the belt, the belt up, like, all his, his awful <laughs> shoulders... Like I just look at that. Look, he, he's got like Larry Zonka legs. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious! It's like somebody twisted his out of shape body into those things. I've never understood it. I've always said it's like I'm two different people. I literally yes. from the waist down. All one American. Thing. He's an all American. Yeah. Yeah. The fuck <laughs> Larry Zonka. <laughs> oh, <that's> fucking great. <laughs> okay, you really do. You have you have white fullback legs from the 1970s. But to imagine having your leg broken, like I think of that too, like when Thysman had his leg, like the agony of that. He said he watched that replay yeah. once. He goes, I never, oh, need, I never need to see that again. Yeah. That? Really? <laughs> that was the original bloody sock. Everybody That's brings so up Kurt Schelling. <laughs> yeah, it fuck his, that. Yeah, his was a compound fracture. I yeah. bet Thysman was like, yeah, I really don't see the big deal of this. I cool. can't. I can't imagine. That. I've never broken anything except a finger. But I mean, I can't imagine what a leg must. When feel you like. see him go back on that leg, and then it just does that. That it's it's the rigid rigid. Boom! It's gone. One of yeah. uh, Joe's shoes would have came right. off. You know. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. You get hit by a car. You, you, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah knocked out of your shoes. You get your shoes. Yeah, that's how out of shape Joe is. No one ever ties uh, their shoes tight enough. These days. <laughs> that's, that's it. I don't know. <laughs> Just seems. So how, how do you get knocked out of your fucking shoes? It's no, amazing that, that, to me. that's that's when you get into the epic level of a beatdown. If if you lose footwear, like yeah. there's really like <laughs> if there's if you have to like I used to do a bit like yeah if you have to like collect your personal belongings. Like, yeah. Where's my comb? Is anybody take them off? Yeah, after a beating, you gotta pick your shit up. Jesus Christ, that is bad. Jesus Christ. I saw two guys when I used to work in a warehouse got into a fight. It was one guy was like six six and skinny. And the other guy was about six one and fat. And the fat he had on these sweatpants. And I don't know what the fuck happened because they started going at it. So I called my friends. By the time I turned back. Somehow the fat guy was like upside down and it was change just pouring out of his pockets. It's <laughs> <laughs> fucking onto that, you know, there's no carpet in the warehouse. Yeah, that clang. Uh, like five guys came over to break it up and immediately dropped to their knees and were just couldn't even move, paralyzed with fucking laughter. <laughs> 
those fucking pants people had in the 80s? The, the sweats by EBs. They were like that oh, style the, with the, the little the, line thing. The Joey Buttafuoco uh, yeah. sweats. The oh. Zubas or whatever. Yeah. That looked like the, the had like the zebra print and shit like that. Is that what they were called? <laughs> the yeah. Joey Buttafuoco's. Yeah. yeah. I just Joey remember Joey Buttafuoco and change porn. <laughs> it was almost that's, like he had, him in, he had him in the guard and then the six foot six guy stood up and he kept his legs wrapped around. I think that that's how it came out. If I could over explain it anymore. <laughs> Fuck uh, it. Never, Fighting stinks, man. Never I'm a big there. fighter, yeah. man. No, <laughs> me, I'm, us I'm useless. The last I, one, I'm so, uh, I'm too afraid of getting hit, is what it is. I do not, I don't like the idea of getting a fist into my face. I don't, I'm not yeah. afraid of getting hit. I have a complete inability to not get hit. Like, you could literally tell me, Bill, I'm going to throw a straight jab. Right? It's not even a I'm throwing it right really? in your face. And I could still, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. I how could never defend against I could yeah. never get out of the way of it. Ever. I don't even know how to set up for a fight. Like, I don't know the right stance. I, I, I would absolutely get the, the, the one from the side of the head punching me i just, just watching you throw a hook right there yeah. you could yeah. just tell no no that Jesus. was like somebody else yeah. doing that it to me. Like you're swinging your <laughs> purse you yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 what do you do you, really you measure when you swing your I <laughs> was imitating the other guy <laughs> punching were, me on the side of the head like, Jesus Jesus buzzy. Uh, oh, no, I'm just I'm useless. At, at I have fighting. No I now see why you collect guns. Yes, I need <laughs> I need lead to be propelled at great velocity even, he into even my use enemy. Like a sword. He couldn't do anything that involved just the simple <laughs> movement of pulling a trigger. <laughs> do you have problems with rifles where you have to coordinate both hands to hold it? No, I'm very and close good. One eye. <laughs> <laughs> I, ah, shit. I, 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 just saw, I just saw all the torture of every gym class you ever went to. All right, who's picking Anthony? Yeah. <laughs> Sitting there in his Kevlar fucking sweatpants. That was me, the guy not to pick, yeah. I uh, just tweeted John Jones's shin kick to Jim Norton's thigh. Is and, then, and then Sam's got a better, a better one. But this one is pretty damn good just off my dumb phone. Okay. And then Sam's going to put a, another video up later today or tomorrow. So uh, check it out. I just tweeted it, Opie Radio. It's hilarious. <laughs> I think it's the best one yet. I almost threw up. It's no, but far. I mean, yeah, but just your reaction good. and everything else. Oh, the whole fucking thing. Yeah. Oof. You fight? Did you ever been in a fight, Ope? I've been in a million fights. Were you like a good, a good brawler? Uh, I did all right. Back in the day, I did okay, I guess. Just okay. You and Burr got that like yeah, Boston, kinda, Long Island, kinda, you know. We're kind of psychotic. <laughs> no, I, I, I have. I, that, I, I'll uh, make it perfectly clear. I don't ever want to be in another fight. I'm not going to be cocky about it. But back in the day, yeah, bar fights and shit. I never Stupid had those. I, I had those uh, dual headlock fights. You give, you give. Like, well, a lot of wrestling. Yeah, yeah, more wrestling. Yeah, more no. wrestling than you know, just uh, squaring off. Right. Right. I was, I was in a dumb fraternity, so there's always a problem. You always were in a bar room brawl. Yeah, and you you were back like when fraternities were. Yeah, like, am I saying fraternity? Frater fraternity. 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 Was, a, was a fraternity. Sorry, I, I would I would say so. Even yeah. though I still get abused for being a pre date but... rape. Yeah, pre uh, <laughs> hazing well, laws. Yeah. Oh yeah, pre hazing laws. Absolutely. It was yeah, just man. a girl that was. Uh, I had to pick ready up marshmallows party. with my fucking ass cheeks, man. I oh, never hardcore. understood the homoerotic shit. I know I, to go into those. Like I came in. I didn't you know, a few years behind you, so I was right at the... Did right, you have some of that shit that you I had was, to do? I didn't. That's why I never went out for football. Like, football, they had this whole thing. You had to fucking... They had the cheese ball race. You had to run over, put pick up cheese ball up with your butt cheeks and run over and drop it into a cup. It's like, what the fuck hey, is that about? I want to play hey. football. Hey, he did the same thing. Did you actually do that? No, that's why I didn't go out for football. I had to do the same thing with marshmallows. And you did yeah. it. We I had did a it bomb. We had a bomb. <laughs> 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 this is, you know, this is really embarrassing because we haven't had Chris Rock on our show in a while, and he's he's hearing us uh, talk about lifting shit from our with our ass cheeks. <laughs> no, I I tapped. I, I was you, like, you didn't do that. Yeah, I was like, right. I don't I don't get. Right. Oh, fraternities were the same thing. Like they had all yeah. that fucking yeah. weird fucking ass play, and it's just yeah, like. Well, and then what? Then we're gonna hang out. I know. It's like all I want to do is like have, have a cake party with the sorority. Yeah, I don't no. have to pick up things with my ass cheeks. I don't know. Yeah. With that, we say hi well, to Chris that, Rock. Chris Rock, everybody. Sorry, Chris. Chris, or maybe his people are are getting Chris Rock. This Chris. All right. Hey, Chris. Hey. Hey, man. How hey, are buddy, you? Hey, buddy. How are you? It's, it's been a while. Yeah, we're on the air. We got uh, Bill Burns, studio. Joe Rosa, Jim Norton. 
and mean ant. When do the funny people get it? <laughs> <laughs> God How you damn, doing, Chris. Can't complain. Well, uh, you're done with Broadway. Before you even talk about uh, anything else, I had to say to you publicly, you were fucking amazing in your uh, you. in your play. You're you're a much better actor than I realized. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, after Pootie Tang, you know, it's all uphill. <laughs> <laughs> I love Pootie Tang. I never saw it. What? How do you not see Pootie well, Tang? Well, Louie told us the story about how, like, you know, you have one vision, but then sometimes the studio steps in and they, they do what they got to do. And well, then... when we do Pootie Tang on Broadway, you're all invited. Oh, <laughs> right on. <laughs> I don't doubt that that would happen. <laughs> like, there's no doubt that that could actually happen. Can I tip my... Also, I've, I've, Chris, I never really met you before, but I've always wanted to tell you this. Uh, me and my friends in high school, before I ever did comedy, were obsessed with CB4. I'm still obsessed with it. I think it's hilarious. And I tip my hat to you for recognizing the utter genius of Charlie Murphy. Thank you. Before anybody did. Mm. Before you know, anybody. Chappelle is such a genius because all those Charlie Murphy stories that are on the Chappelle show... Mm -hmm. He told them on the set of CB4. <laughs> I, I knew all those stories years and years, 15 years in advance. And then I'm watching Chappelle's show. I'm like, oh, my God, I could have had all of that. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're kind of like the college coach that you could have drafted like Jeter to play for you, but you just kind of like in, enjoyed watching him and then exactly. ignored him. Exactly. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, man. <laughs> Obviously, twelfth selection. Chris Rock selects Ken O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Marino reference. Nobody. How's it going? No, I got it. I'm a Jets fan. Hey, hey O'Brien's you know better than Sanchez. <laughs> yeah, he, old pick six. Yeah, Sanchez. I don't know. He makes us a little nervous as uh, I like Jets Sanchez, fans. But O'Brien, you know. What, what do you think of Tebow? If you want to talk football? Wow! <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Wow, man, I guess other teams are going to start letting linebackers play quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's 6-1 uh, and one as a starter now, and it's very un unconventional, as we all know. Yeah, but it's, it's like baseball. You know, he, he, you know, like in baseball, the guy gets hot, then, you know, go, what, when he goes through the league a second time, let me, yes. let me see what happens. When they figure him out. When they figure out that Prohibition-era offense that they're, <laughs> they're running. <laughs> <laughs> fucking pit, pitch it to fucking right now. Curly or Larry. <laughs> <laughs> they need to I swear to God, I saw that offense on the Three Stooges one time. <laughs> hey, lateral it to me, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we, we missed that. What was that? I'm sorry, Chris. We were left. If Tebow plays like there's no black guys on the field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he loves his God. He wants everyone to know how much oh, yeah. he loves God. Well, you know. No, in defense of him, God actually decided to back a shitty football player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's working for him. What was Bill going to say? In defense of Tebow, he he talked about Jesus in college. He hasn't done it yet. They just keep putting the camera on him when he uh, starts speaking in tongues every time they uh, kick a field goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> like, like, like God really cares. Sounds like an auctioneer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I just know everybody. <laughs> I just, everybody in the red states is so are so excited. This is has got to be their 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 guy for the, like the, like the last twenty oh, years. Oh yeah, very religious and, he and he's a, winning. He wears a vest. He's yeah. clean cut. He's into Jesus. He's a good boy. Pretty amazing what he's doing. Though. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, Chris, obviously, uh, you know, fucking Patrice. We're all just obviously. You want me to replace Patrice, and I accept. Yeah, yeah. yeah. come on in. <laughs> we're, we're sick over it. It's this is uh, everyone has been saying how rough this one is. This is just a rough one. It is a rough one because I mean, first of all, people don't realize how full of life this guy was. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like, like, just absolutely filled up a room when he walked in a room, and he was so funny, and he was just. He was just figuring out what he did. You know what I mean? He was just figuring out how to take that thing he did mm. in the restaurant and put it on stage. You know what I mean? Yes. The thing he did off stage was coming on stage, and he was, you know, it's it's it's, it's like the comedic Lynn Bias of anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, like mm. this guy was really getting ready to to. We were all getting ready to have work for Patrice O'Neill. That's basically. <laughs> Ready to happen. He, he was figuring it all out right in front of our eyes. He was oh. he was there, man. 
Yeah, I know. When, when Elephant in the Room came out, I was excited for him, and I was nervous. I was like, is he going to make me look like a child? Because, like, he was that... <laughs> Like, it was literally what he was saying. Mm. I almost felt like once it was his to take, once he just decided he wanted it. That's it. That's the level. That's yeah. what I always told funny. him. Yeah. Right, right. When I he... always told him, like, look around. Do you see anybody as funny as you? Really? Really? Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jimmy said it last week. He could be funny with anyone. You can't think of one person he wouldn't be as funny or funnier. Like, any... Yeah. any any comic you could put him in the room with who's ever worked, and he would be comfortable being funny with them. Yes, yes. I mean, we're all established guys here. Is any one of us, does any one of us really want to follow the guy? <laughs> right, no. No, he used to hold uh, court with, he actually was so funny, he could get comedians who are always trying to top people's stories to actually shut up and become audience members. Yeah. <laughs> like that time he went at it with the, the transvestite out in front of that. Oh, God, I forgot about that. Dude, that. It was literally just some transvestite was coming down the street and he was just in one of those moods where he felt like fucking with somebody and he fucked with this transvestite and she immediately came right back at him. Said, remember that line? She said, you got so many spaces between your teeth. Looks like your tongue's in jail. <laughs> that's, what, that's what started it. Jesus Christ. And he hit her with shit just as big. Dude, and we just sat there. It was like, it was a comedic version. You ever see that that tape of Biggie when he was just got in that rap battle in the middle of, like, the purest yeah, right, form? Right, It was like the purest form of comedy. There was no security. There was no crowd. Like, a crowd just developed around, around what the around fuck the was happening. And he just sat there. <laughs> and, you know, she hit him with a couple of stock lines and he like Ali leaned on the ropes, let the he she punch <laughs> herself out and then he just fucking destroyed her. And but it was it was unbelievable. I remember uh, just really in that moment going, this guy is like this guy's he is truly special. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you're really not you're really not going to see another one. That was a one off. Yep. That, that was yeah. it. He's fucking his ability. I showed my parents. My parents were visiting this week and I showed them elephant in the room. Because they didn't know who Patrice was. They just knew that he was. I had a friend that passed or whatever. And uh, I showed it to him. My dad's a Catholic church deacon. <laughs> and my dad was red faced and laughing hysterically at Patrice going, Why can't we have harassment day? You know, excuse me, <laughs> ho. I always wanted you to you know, would you suck my dick in the broom closet? <laughs> like the fact that he can make a fucking man of the cloth laugh as hard as like Bill or me or any, you know, whatever. It's fucking, it's uncanny, man. Uncanny ability. There was nothing better than seeing Patrice meet somebody for the first time who was, like, impressed with themselves, and they thought they were on some oh. level of accomplishment. I saw him one time. He made this fucking white dude, a 50-year-old guy. You could just tell he ran a company or something, and he just was so used to running shit. As he sat in the crowd, he had this vibe like he was running it, even though he was at the show. <laughs> like you were performing for him. You know, Patrice got on stage. He just, he, he didn't have to meet the guy, just sensed it. He made this guy so fucking mad. I was actually standing behind the guy, and I could see the anger in the back of his head <laughs> and his shoulders. You know, Patrice had that laugh when he was really getting you that. Oh, what? yeah. He enjoyed it. Sounded like a, sounded like a <laughs> fucking trumpet. Yeah. And he's just yeah. laughing in this guy's face, and then he finally said something like, you look like you want to fire me, but you can't. And that was oh, the shit. one that just, that was the one that just Jesus fucking Christ. leveled the room. And I'm so fucking sad about this shit. I, I, I couldn't wait for him to get big because I wanted to see those TMZ guys to try to fuck with him at the airport. Like sure. how much he would have enjoyed that and destroyed him. And they yep. was, I, I just, it's just, it's the worst fucking thing ever. It's, yeah. it's horrible. There's so many things that were, you know, are going to happen that you would just love to know what his take was going to be on it. You, uh, um, Chris, you helped him too in a weird way because when, when you were on the, the show at K-Rock with us and, and Patrice was in and it kind of turned into an intervention because you were telling him that like you wanted him for your show and you know, it, it just, he might've been hard to be around. And you told him kind of with love and with, and, and that really, I think it changed. It him. absolutely changed him. I love the guy. I, you know, he's just one of those guys that, so the moment he started getting out of his own way, that's exactly it. It, it, it was all going to open up for him, and and that's what was happening. And I, when I was on the show, and, and by the way, what what I did on the show is what I did to every time I saw him. Right. I was like, "Money, <laughs> you're funnier than everybody. Jesus. Embrace it. Come in." Smile. Don't, don't worry. The white man does, is not going to beat your ass today. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You know? And I, I, he, 
He loved putting a spark to a bridge, though. <laughs> he loved putting a spark to a bridge. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Burn a bridge like that guy. Oh, amazing. And it was fucking hilarious, but, like, also, you just know, be like, thinking, what are you oh, doing? What, why? Yeah, it's like, why cross it first, then burn <laughs> it. Yeah. Do you ever tell every bridge? Cross it first, then burn it. Right, right, right. <laughs> did, did he ever tell you that story when he went into CBS? which was like a notoriously cold room during this era. It was like you walked in, they had the lights low, like that guy who ran that team in the natural. You don't know, like the fucking baseball owner. And you would just go in there, dude, like already sweating. You'd start tap dancing, and they wouldn't give it up for anything. And he walked in there, maybe tap danced for half a second, and right in the middle of the meeting, you know, you're pitching a show to get a deal. There's a yeah. invisible bag of money sitting there, and he just says, fuck it. And he starts looking at every executive there and starts pointing at everybody. You don't like me. You don't like me. And you don't like me. Just started trashing him. Yeah, Unknown true. comic. And I was I was laughing my ass off. I'm like, Priest, do you realize that that story was on the other side of Hollywood before you even got back to your <laughs> rented Dodge Neon? Why would you do that? And he's like, man, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm fucking gonna sit there and three thousand miles to have you staring at me? Because you got you got a, you got a desk. For audition for everybody hates Chris. Didn't mm. know his lines. Like y'all don't want me. Y'all. I'm like I was dying to give him the part. Oh. Jesus, can you imagine? Yeah, he was defensive sometimes when he didn't need to be. Like, uh, like he, I think sometimes he, he didn't understand how much people would just love him or how much people enjoyed him. Um, he knew he was so funny, but, you know, look, everybody else, he's, you know, he's a comedian. He's fucking got major problems like we all do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think he never understood that, man, people really will embrace you and they don't mind your shitty, cynical, you, like, you're, you're so funny, people will just love you. We used to joke about the supreme confidence that hacks have. You know what I mean? Uh, they just never, they never question their talent. They just never they do. Never question their they talent. just always, they go on stage with supreme confidence in their, their fucking prolific sure. mediocrity. <laughs> always coming out with another special. Always feel like, yeah, America needs to hear this. And then you get a guy like Patrice where it's like, dude, you talking to yourself in the shower should be a fucking album. Yeah. And you, you're trying to get the dude off the... I don't know, man. That's it's, that, that's probably gonna, you know. It just fucking yeah. hurts. Because he was about to do it on his terms too. You know, we talk about all the bridges he burned, but he was about to do it on his terms. Mm -hmm. Finally, yeah, Chris. Oh, sorry, Chris. The other, the other, the other moral of the story is, uh, you know, despite you know Biggie being you know so big and heavy D and all that. Hey, fat's not good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. And just because. You're popular and you get laid. It doesn't mean you're healthy. <laughs> God yeah. damn! I know. Uh, you know yeah, Louis was saying that. Live off of chicken wings from the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> Louis was saying he, he's just pissed at himself for not going over there and saying, "Hey, asshole, what are you doing to yourself?" I think people tried. To be honest, yeah. With you. Patrice is smart enough to know. Yeah, they he's tried. not a dumb guy. He he, he knew. Um, but it's like anything else. When someone's drinking too much or smoking cigarettes, it, it's. It, death is like an intangible, faraway thing. You know it's there, but it's not. Right. It's not like a gun pointed at you. Do you know last this, last night somebody from England, a comedian from England, this is how much this guy's love, flew all the way over here on his own dime to come to the funeral today, and he was telling this story. They were doing a TV taping in London, so of course Patrice doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> He's treating this like you know Europe's Friday night videos. He doesn't <laughs> give a shit, right? And for some reason they had a book in the green room. I guess that was it had a list of all these comedians that were so far down the ladder they didn't have a manager or an agent they just had their phone number their home phone number so patrice oh, wow. instead of preparing for his set starts calling these <laughs> guys over in england <laughs> he called one guy up had a puppet and he goes yeah how much uh to book the puppet <laughs> i just want to get the puppet i don't i don't want to book you <laughs> he asked another guy how much do, would it cost to get you to just stop <laughs> Oh, yeah, so nobody was paying attention to the taping. They were all gathering around Patrice once again, holding court, and yeah, everyone yeah. just laughing, like, call another one, oh, call another man. one. Just this... effortless. I've totally butchered that story, but no, no, that's, this... that's him. That is him. It's funny, man. The same guy. God. It's Brendan Burns, is who we're talking about. Yeah. English comic. Yeah, Brendan Burns. We were, at the, we were doing the Nasty Show in Montreal, and Brendan came over to hang out backstage, and he was, he was going off about English comedy and how good the scene is, and Patrice just goes... English comedy stinks. <laughs> it did a 10 minute just improv <laughs> sketch of an English comedy club. <laughs> oh, and he's just no. going, coming to the stage, Ian Iglepuss. <laughs> <laughs> and, he's, and he's just making up these ridiculous things. 
Uh, get the fuck out of here, you stick. <laughs> Y'all are 30 years behind us. I was the king of England when I went over there. It was so fucking funny, man. Uh, motherfucker. Yeah. And you're God like, wow, damn. I wish I had anything in my act half that fucking funny. Yeah. And he just said that all off the top of his goddamn head for 10 minutes. And that was, you know. It was almost like, like he didn't even write. That was the creepy <laughs> thing about Patrice. He didn't know what was his yeah, material go, go, that go he with wrote. That, Opie. Go with I'm that. Go with that. No, he didn't. He just. You don't like, think he wrote it all, it's right? It's like Jay Z. Jay Z. Jay Z. I heard he just is all in his fucking head. Right. The same thing. He, he, I don't think I've known him twenty years. Never saw him go. Hey, I got to go into CVS and get a notebook. <laughs> right. <laughs> Never saw him with a laptop. Special though. I don't. I don't care what he says. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there were so many times on the radio show we would say, "Please save that for the air." That's amazing. Like he he didn't he couldn't stop. We'd go to break and he was just as funny, just hanging. Oh, out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't uh, seen Elephant right. in the Room because I don't watch stuff that you know. You just don't want to see what the guys you know are doing. Because it really it's, is fucking good. Man. I watched a clip. I just the a clip yeah. about being mean to animals, and it was like God, a fucking yeah. body was oh. great. Yeah, he nailed it. You never he want to understand that it. your peer is so great. Like you know what I mean? No, nobody recognizes that they're they're working with with such greatness. And, and it's like when someone dies, then you reflect. Right. But while you're seeing it, you don't realize. He's like, God damn. Shit. He's got a CD coming out called Mr. P. Mr. Too, P, yeah. That he was putting together. This isn't one of those things where the family rushed out because, uh, you know, he died. Oh, no, he was, he was responsible this is, for it. This is something he wanted out there. And, uh, yeah, they're taking pre-orders now. And, and Jonathan said the other day, it's brilliant. This thing, Mr. P, is brilliant. Yeah, and it's available on iTunes and uh, Amazon now for pre-order if you guys want to go out and get it. And the money's going to the family. Yeah, the, the, the CD I'm company right. actually switched the deal to give his family more yep. money. They, they, they're taking a lower percentage. Yep. Hey, was any, anybody else on that benefit we did that one time for the rescue dogs? No. You was, was at a no. Steinberg gig? So we did this gig, and it was like we show up. You figure it's for rescue dogs. We're working for free. Everyone's going to be paying attention. It was this Manhattan just who's who shit. And nobody was paying attention. The only two people paying attention were two cast members of Queer Eye for the straight guy. This is like fucking eight years <laughs> yeah. ago. And uh, so I go up first and like an idiot, I go right into my act and I just immediately start bombing. Nobody's paying attention to me. I'm working for free. And all I can hear is Patrice laughing oh, ah, shit, yeah. at the back of the fucking <laughs> thing, right? Each one of us tried to adjust somehow to kill and none of us could we all ate our balls and then patrice went up there and opened with talking about how he had a puppy for breakfast and went through the whole preparation of it <laughs> <laughs> and just pissed everybody off in the room and then went, right when he had everybody listening he just trashed everybody in the room and this whole thing so the lady who ran the event with her Fuck. i run shit fucking dress she had on <laughs> was telling him she goes she told him to get off the stage and he's just going, and he's going, no, I'm not getting upset. She goes, she goes, I put this thing together. He goes, bitch, I don't give a fuck. And he just kept going. Oh, so then, man. No, he, he wouldn't get off the stage. That's and then they, they turned off the microphone. No. And there was a piano on stage. So he sits down at the piano and starts playing the piano, which he can't. And I remember he's just sitting there banging it. And as she's yelling at him, he just looked over the impish smile ever, just looking over, smiling. And I was just so fucking happy he did it. And I was so mad that I didn't think to fucking why I went up there like an hat in hand. <laughs> hey, my dad's wacky and just ate my balls. It was it was I mean I prepare a puppy. Uh, That's brilliant. He, he was one of those friends, one of those comedians who could be your fucking hero in any given moment by doing something like that. Like, yeah. God damn it, I love the fact that he fucking had the balls. He was uh Oh. He was very. He was impossible to own Patrice because there's nothing you could dangle in his face mm. that he couldn't walk away from. Like he literally Obviously, could, yeah. could not Obviously. be controlled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when the seller tried to kick him out? The seller kicked him out, and then we all he hung around the corner, so we would all do our sets and then leave because we wanted to hang around with him. So Wait a minute, why did the seller kick him yeah. out? Well, he had an I, argument it, with Manny, yeah. I think, but it was it was uh, it was it was a mistake. It was a misunderstanding. I, I watched it happen, and Manny mistook. Uh, Patrice was asking him if he had false teeth, and we, we, <laughs> <laughs> but like oh we God. would tease each other all the time there, and he was it was getting to. I, I think that was something Manny was sensitive about because he was seventy, and it was one of the only things I guess that was hit, that was like his Achilles. And Patrice really didn't know. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't say anything bad about this. No, no, I, man, I got kicked out for a minute. Everybody, <laughs> at some point, you know, you're you're, you're late or whatever. You do whatever, and then they they got to throw down the gauntlet. So, mm. so I think he didn't want to come back. I'm saying I think that like he just said fuck this. I'm not going back, and and he just didn't want to go back. Well, all I know is so now we would just all go hang where he was at. So then they had to let him back in. You just you couldn't beat him. He oh, just, so because everybody was leaving the club. Because we were all club. gonna yeah. leave, yeah. And then you know they want people hanging around or whatever, so they had to let him back in. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then he figured that out going. That was kind of golden handcuffs that they let me back in. So then what he did was he was back in, but he wouldn't put him for spots. And we'd just go down there and hang out. It was always chess with him. Oh, I yeah. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, was, it was awesome. You got to respect that, though, man. Yeah. He, uh, I, he was at Caroline's one night, and, he, and there was a work, like a Christmas party there. Fucking 25 people and their female boss. So, of course, like, you're waiting for it. You're like, when's uh -huh. he going to attack the boss? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> finally, he gets around to it, and he goes, let me tell y'all how she likes to get fucked. Oh. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, see how she wear her hair up in that bun? She likes to let that shit down. She likes a dude to wrap that shit around his fist five, six times <laughs> and pull her head down like a horse and go, bitch, shut the fuck up. <laughs> right? Fucking all of her employees are laughing at her. She's staring at Patrice, dude, like Venom. And Patrice just goes, bitch, don't give me boss eyes. <laughs> I don't work for you. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> like <a> maniac. <sighs> That's fantastic. Gonna fucking miss him, man. Yeah. yeah. Obviously. God damn. Want to thank Chris for calling in. Yeah, Chris, yeah really thanks, man. It, Chris. Thanks for having me. I'm sure I'll see you guys tonight, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is uh, a bummer. But well, you know, what the fuck are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, that's the easy way Chris to get around. Chris is in great right, shape, so we're, that, we're good there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in decent shape. Uh, yeah. let's, let's work on a towel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he won't stop smoking. I feel like a fucking nudge ant. Every time I see him, I want to just go stop because he, he quit drinking. He's doing good. He's like, he looks okay, but fucking, he won't stop smoking. Yeah, I just it's like, will you stop? Can stop it. I need one vice. Yeah, yeah he, he he smokes a lot. He yep. smokes a lot. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's what we do next week. We just pick out a few guys to you know. Guys, yeah. Even though people did say something, to Patrice, we always feel like we could have said more. But again, he knew. He was he was the smartest guy in the room. I mean, he yeah, he always knew. Twenty four hours. Either, yeah, you know? he was going to make his own decisions, and it's it's unfortunate. They said even look with diabetes, even if you're totally thin and you you jog, it can happen. But by you overeating and stuff, and you just fucking put the odds through himself. the roof. Yeah, man, you make it much worse. Right. Yeah. Yeah, See you tonight, brother. It was good talking to you. Ah, right, thanks a lot. All right, Chris. Thanks, Thank Chris. you, Chris. Bye, Chris. Right. Chris Rock, everyone. Yeah, that really did help Patrice. I think when Chris that day he was in because it yeah. got to him because Chris wasn't coming at him like you asshole. He was like, I wanted to give you. It was extremely real, remember? Yeah. And we I were think, like, whoa. And I think and Patrice, Patrice realized listened, it. too. Yeah. One of the, you know what? One of the only times you watch Patrice actually sit back and listen <laughs> instead no, of would, coming he, back with he, something. He would do that in rare occasions when, uh, and it was always when someone was being brutally honest with him. He would, he would actually uh, stop talking and making fun of you for mm -hmm. half a second. But, uh Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. And it's, 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 you know, look, everybody always says too soon when somebody dies. It's, it's, it's a cliche thing to say. But with Patrice, I've just never seen it more applicable. This was such, yeah. you know, I, Geraldo was the first guy I knew in this business to go, and it was very upsetting. But Patrice was the first, I mean, I was friends with Greg, but Patrice was the first guy that I was really like, holy shit, like, this can happen, man. Like, mm. it can, you can go before. Even though you're loved and respected and have so much to say and, and are such a presence, you can go at any fucking time. It's it's really scary, man, and it's it's so upsetting because you know there was like it, seven more of those it, specials. Welcome there. to middle it, age, Joe. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> middle age is when you realize that life doesn't give a shit. That it right. just it doesn't. You know, right. it it's upsetting because he was young, but it's also like you're saying, upsetting knowing what he was about to do. Yeah, with his career, it was like you know, so there on was, both levels. It just is just sucks. Yeah, I have so wanted to see that it's, guy go go to that. Uh, <clears throat> it was going to be a whole new group of people who are going to meet him for the first time, which I tell you, I can't oh, stress yeah. that enough. Watching somebody meet that guy when he was in that fucking mood, which he usually was. Yeah. I just love how he used to pick out. I remember one time this beautiful girl came in and she had this little scar. You could barely fucking see it. Oh, that motherfucker. He, he, he went right for it. Yeah. That's how you do it now. I like that scar you got right there, right? And then immediately she's just all fucking uncomfortable. And just, he just brought it to this fucking real place that she, you know, hadn't probably been in since, you know, I don't know what. And it, he could just, I don't know. Did Take I tell it. that story about him talking, telling that girl to shut up? Uh, her, that, could her be, voice. that could be a thousand stories. <laughs> Was that at the cellar or no? That time we were at the cellar and that, those girls were all talking. I think I told that when I called in. I'll tell it again. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, it don't matter. Just sitting there, like, you know. It's a loud bar, and you know, women, their voices go up, it gets fucking, and he just goes, they sit there talking like, ah, 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 
what? And he keeps glancing over there as he's trying to talk to me. And then he did that glance for an extra second. I'm like, oh, fuck, he's going to say something. <laughs> he's on, and he he's just going. picked out one. He just goes, ma'am, miss, ma'am. And she finally looks and she goes, what? And he goes, your voice. <laughs> and she goes, she goes, is it loud? And he goes, it's piercing. <laughs> right? And he just starts and just basically tells her to shut up. So then it, these girls are fucking gorgeous, too. So her two friends want to come to her rescue. So all three of them come over to Patrice. I'm like, oh, fuck, how the hell is he going to deal with this? And I don't know what he did. Within 30 seconds, he had them auditioning to figure out who had the best uh, sexy phone sex voice. Holy shit. And they were yeah. auditioning for him. And he was sitting there judging and telling each one of them why, despite their looks, guys didn't find him attractive after like a third date. And he was so in there. It's wow. Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, he was in yes. their fucking heads. Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. He was a psychologist, man. He really was a brilliant, brilliant, intuitive fucking psychologist, man. He just under... He read people immediately. He I know just, exactly uh, the way when you describe that, how I went, Your voice! Yeah. Like, he would just do that. Your shit. voice. Your voice. Yeah. What was better than him shushing people? It's what was funnier than that? Oh. Shh. <laughs> he used to do oh. that. He, I, he used to do that on the subway. He'd be on the subway, and it would be jam-packed with people, and he'd just go, and shh. And everyone would shut up for half a second, <laughs> yeah. and then he would just start laughing. People would get so fucking mad. <laughs> and he was the one that brought that to the circle, right? Him and Keith Robinson are yeah. the two I could. I never, Keith is a I never shusher. heard that before. Yeah. Like his shusher was, he was do, so loud. And he could do it so loud. He could do it yeah. in bars, and everybody right. would shut up. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and they, they all would look around like, "Where did that they come don't from?" They don't realize why they're being shushed. And, and you hear people start going, "Who keeps doing that?" Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I would beg him to do it at the cellar. He because from the back of the room, I would like just shush everybody. It was like asking someone to sing your favorite song and he would yeah. finally shush and the whole fucking restaurant would go silent and he'd be like why the fuck did we stop talking who is that dude it's like you got something on your shirt like the person would fall for it every yeah, yeah. fucking time that's so fucking funny. Oh, I think one time great. I was going out to his house in Jersey. We were, it was way back in the day, you know, we were struggling. We were on the fucking path trade. He did it like fucking nine times to the point I was embarrassed going, please stop doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you never say that to him, no. He's going to just do it more. No, and then I think the oh, entertainment was him watching me be so Get fucking uncomfortable. Right? uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh, God. And he could diffuse yeah. almost anything, too. Like, the, even though he was a big guy. He was so fucking, he just had that light, man. He was so fucking charismatic. Like, he mm -hmm. could diffuse any type of aggression. Um, he just knew how to fucking let the air out and, and make people, uh -huh. Manny had the same ability, Manny Dwarman. No matter how heated it got, in a second, he could diffuse it, whatever. Almost I, that, will. You know something, that's what I loved about Manny the best. Is because I came from that stupid Irish. You get into a fight and then you hold on to it right. for fucking nine Forever. years. Yeah. Yeah. He had that thing. He had a, he had a, he could actually just make it be like that. He come over, you, hey, and you just see that Manny laugh, and you just start fucking laughing, being like, I don't. And then you start thinking, this is that we should have done it in my family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Manny had a fight one time, one of our rare fights, like a real argument. I might have told the story already, but Manny, uh, I didn't go into the cellar for forty days. Uh, I stayed out for over a month. I was so fucking mad at him, and he was mad at me. And I finally went back in. Um, because I just missed it, and, and I, he and I walked by each other, and we just kind of looked at each other and said, hello, hello. And then we were at this, in the back, and it was very <laughs> tense when he was at the table with me. Um, and he said, uh, he said, I have some uh, pictures of you that I want, I want to give you that I took. And I'm like, okay, thanks. And he goes, let me go get them out of the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> immediately. <laughs> immediately everything was okay. He That's made me laugh. That's funny. <laughs> immediately. He fucking just That's took great. the air so out That was another one. That was another rough one. Manny, Manny was terrible. Manny was the, and you know what yeah. I loved about Manny? Manny, uh, Manny fucking, he loved, he loved people, like, he loved the debate. Loved like, it. he loved sitting there and, like, uh, so he didn't want to be mad at you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I learned a lot about not being oh. an angry psycho just through <laughs> that guy, like, how he had that ability. And interesting enough, Bobby Kelly, living with Bobby Kelly. Bobby's really good at that after you have this epic, Is I'm he? gonna choke, yeah. Really? Choke you to death. That he can actually, you know, yeah, 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 he starts going, listen, dude, bro, and all yeah, that shit. And you're like, yeah. and you're like, oh, this fucking idiot. I can't be mad at him. <laughs> he'll, yeah, and Bobby, Bobby does the great thing, too, where he'll go, uh, he'll be like, it's okay, dude. I'm sorry I snapped at you, right? And and then, like, he'll be talking to you. He'll go, he'll go, I mean, you know, nobody's got to 
think about that you got all this fucked up shit that you do and it really pisses everybody off or whatever. Like, he'll slip it in. <laughs> oh, man. And you'll, you'll just be going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I'll go, I'm fucking with you, stupid. You know, and you're like, ah, you cocksucker. <laughs> like the battered wife. <laughs> I, wor I worry about Bobby, too, with his eating. I mean, we tease him and stuff because mm -hmm. we're friends, but it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah, my friend, it's like, you worry about, like, dude, it's I said tough. that to him yesterday. We went in. For, we went in. He's gonna kill me for telling this story. But we went in to go get a fucking sandwich, and you know, I picked up this little bag of chips, and then What's he, that? It, and then he <laughs> picks up this big bag of chips. <laughs> that. What's that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, 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 please ignore it. Okay. It's better big that bag way. of fucking <laughs> chips. I go, Bobby, you don't need all those. So then he grabbed like two little ones. I go, put one of those back. Two. He and I go, two right. little. Yeah. I don't know what he's. Uh... He, look, we were we went the other day. I made him walk with me to the Levi's store. Uh, More fucking jeans? Like pants and <laughs> jeans. <laughs> like, what, are you, what are you doing? Joe's what are you jeans, raping Levi's? women and throwing jeans out in your face? <laughs> He's the gene yeah. killer. I, um, yeah, the blue gene killer. Blue gene killer. The Pepsi Cola rapist. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, For uh, each trophy, he needs a new pair of jeans. Ah, uh, come on, guys. That's just dark. Yeah, he has a bunch of jeans with cum and blood. <laughs> right. Fucking a long blonde <laughs> hair, hair samples. <laughs> and it all yeah. came out of the same hole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I made him walk. I had to return some <laughs> But pants. seriously, folks. I had to return. <laughs> Come on, I had to go for it. I had to return some pants, and uh, I made him. Want, I was with him and Don, or his wife, for breakfast, and uh, and I'm, I go. I got to return some pants. Come with me. And his wife's like, "Yuck, you should go." And we're walking, and he's yelling at me, "Fucking stupid cocksucker!" I want to. And I go, "Dude, do you understand? I care about you. This is good." That we're doing this. And we went into Starbucks. I'm like, don't get, like, I'm not trashing them. I'm like, don't get any fucking cookies, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm worried about you. It's like watching. Don't do it. Because Bobby's a compulsive guy like I am with sex. And like, you know, like, like everyone is. But he, he just, the food is such an addiction, man. And it's a fucking hard one. It's it's hard because you cannot, we've talked about it, but you can't be fucking abstinent from food. Yeah, you got to eat some. And it's like, uh, it's like I worry about him. Like, come on, dude. Because I, I took some, I sent some pictures of me, Bobby, and Patrice from Brazil. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I was just going through some photos. Was Bobby a lot thinner back yeah, then? Yeah, man. And it's like, he has the ability to get thin. He really yeah. does. Because Bob's oh, yeah, like a fucking... Yeah. He could just lock on to like working out and work out. You know, he, he can do it. Yeah, it's on or off with him. Yeah, yep. I just want to see him do it for his own health. It's like... Do -do 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 <laughs> what is the theme from Fat Cell? This is what he's, he's whatever the oh, fuck that God. is. Yeah, there you go. Dude, I'm done with sugar, dude. I'm fucking hitting your gym, dude. Doing sit ups. Did it, dude. Fucking dude. Did it, dude. <laughs> Got a weight loss app for Getting my shitted, iPhone. Dude. Gonna get my fucking abs. <laughs> <laughs> that last, like, <laughs> he really oh, is at that level of fat where he should just have the gray on gray sweatsuit from <laughs> Sears. <laughs> oh God, that's fucking. Uh, All right, well, look. yeah. Now that we expressed our concern, let's trash him. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, right, right. well you gotta do it that way. How yeah, come no concern around. for uh, Roland? It's a good point. Yeah, you know, uh, you know what? I love Roland. Oh, I'm, but Bobby's one of my Roland closest well, yeah, yeah. friends. I've had I've had sit downs with Roland. He knows. Yeah, yeah. he knows. He he scares me. Dude, his food is fucking terrible. He scares me. Roland, I say, Roland was just he, when we were watching that baby calf get birth, uh, get given birth to, and a <laughs> cute little calf face, and <laughs> Roland just goes, "All I see is veal." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, Roland. What's Roland. up with my stress? <laughs> we oh, he blames us. We don't Get like the your jet hat. Here. Yeah, what's up with the jet hat? The new jet What are you wearing that for? What you, why are you wearing that? It's fucking horrendous. You don't have the right head for that. Patrice would have looked great in that head. Yes, he would have. Oh, uh, yeah. I know. We are you uh, loving the Jets? Yeah. We're a little nervous with the Sanchez. Jets, New York Jets. He did all right yesterday, right? Yeah. Dude, the Jets can, they know the how to win in the end, though. They're 7-5. I uh I I wouldn't want to play those guys. Packers are rough. Oh, the Packers are great. Packers are ridiculous. Yeah. The Niners don't count them out. No, the th Niners. I think if they, if they if they had a quarterback. Is Drew Brees not good? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Not you thinking. I'm thinking Saints. Niners. Well, let me put my two cents into this. You don't like football. No, listen, boy, Joe. I, I'm On telling contrary, you this guy. It's Niners. a good year. It's a good year for football. I say. Would you, say, would you say? I, I mentioned Drew Brees because uh, he did, but I was thinking Saints. I haven't seen a player like Drew Brees 
since uh, I would say Namath was the last time I've seen somebody like play huh. like Drew Brees. Let me beat Bill. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, serious. Joe. I'm I love very serious. Uh, 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 who, who said that, Joe? Uh, you didn't hear the Joe. whole conversation. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> who said that? You're repeating it. <laughs> Drew, Drew Brees is. Oh, Joe. He's the old stuff. Uh, <laughs> All right. I thought that was going to be. What's the matter, Joe? You tired of being left out of the conversation? He's fun to do her. Yeah. It's really mean, but really true and funny. The eyes laugh and it hurts. The eyes get real squinty. Yeah. And he doesn't look at you. He looks at Mike. Oh, it's not a Joe. This one, too. Jesus, Joe. Jesus. Nice, long Jesus. Yeah. Just a fucking. You got to sit like that. Joe. <laughs> Can't tell if you're doing me or an 80-year-old 80, 80 uh, fucking va vaudeville guy. It, I, I did vaudeville not, guy. I, I, didn't, I really <laughs> didn't have the reference. I was trying to think of the, that. What, what the hell did they? Poughkeepsie? Where the fuck did all those old Jewish guys go? Oh, Catskills. Catskills. That was what I was looking for. Old, yeah. old vaudeville guy. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, when you were telling that Patrice story about the, uh, the, you know, the animal thing, and you said you wish you did that, yeah. was that before the Philly thing? Yeah. Because you had your moment where you, you turned it in Philly. Oh, yeah, I mean, show. look, I, I, it's not like I hadn't snapped on crowds, but right. I was so, like, it was different. It was a benefit, and I was sitting there, and there was ooh, there was some people there. Somebody oh, from NBC so, was there, so I was in this oh, fucking... Yeah. So you felt like, you know what, I, even if I want to, I, I just can't go I have there. to be a professional, gotcha. right. and I, I felt like uh, gotcha. it was, I made... I, I basically kept giving them respect when they were showing me none. So I, I <laughs> it was one of the worst feelings. Now I understand. That's yeah. what understand. you just said. It, it's it's not about. You it, thought there was way too the the people who were way too important in the audience to yeah you know, the fuck around. Cast with. from TV shows were there. Gotcha. Oh, everyone was dressed up. This was you know I didn't have a, like any sort of agent going. Maybe somebody from CAA is here. Like yeah, I was yeah. I was in that stupid. No, it was a great story. A deal. It was a great story, but I was confused because I'm like, nah, Bill would fucking do that. But now I get it. Patrice now addressed it. it the way you wished you had addressed it as a comic. Like, ah, he was yeah. being... Yeah, I've been there too. And man. also, I grew into that. Like, Patrice came in <laughs> like, like that. that. He came yeah, in was, like that. He actually had to that tone it down and remember to do material. Standard equipment <laughs> with him. <laughs> you, you, they yeah. should like you. Yeah. yeah. No, he, from day one, doing stand-up, was already there. It took me, it took me years. Mm. And, you know, obviously getting to see a guy his caliber, it was, uh, you know... Ah, it's the worst, worst his laugh, fucking day ever. We've talked about his big, yeah. dumb laugh. But anybody that Greatest thinks Patrice ever. was mean, when you, when you made him laugh like that, like, you, you really felt like a funny person. Oh, you know? yeah, it yeah. It was like, when he fucking let go, like, you that's know. the guy I think of when I think of Patrice. Not mean, or, and people have had horrible experiences with him, because he, 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 he was at times <laughs> fucking... Oh, believe me, there's a lot of people not sad today. I, I said there's as many happy <laughs> and sad, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Because he was mean to certain comics unnecessarily, and, you know, look, at one point he went back and started apologizing to guys, because he felt bad about the interactions he had had, like, he has a conscience. But he gave you respect, man. You know, he gave you that over-the-top laugh saying, fuck, that was funny, man. If something was funny, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think one of the hardest I saw anybody make him laugh was the time Voss did that bit. Hey, you know, what time is it? He, there was this Asian guy walking down the street. Like, you know, he's like in the middle of moving, and he had all these boxes. And the joke is you basically go, hey, what time is it? And yeah. as the guy looks down at the watch, you walk away. Sure. And just the look of exasperation because the guy had to adjust the weight of the boxes. Like, I thought Patrice was, was going to fall down. Was that in front of Boston? The Boston, yep. remember that? And yep. he was... He, he like he actually started running. He was laughing so hard. If you can imagine yeah. trying to run away from the he, laugh, he yeah. ran like like <laughs> from his own laugh yeah. and like leaned on this car and was laughing so hard. And the laugh was so great. I remember thinking like I wish I I could make him laugh that hard because yeah, that is yeah. like and, and it was that you know the, it was out there in the streets. So it was echoing off the buildings. It was just. It yeah, just was great. fucking. It was awesome. Yeah, anytime you made him laugh, it was just fucking gold. Oh God, it's like, right, oh man. man, okay, good. Patrice oh, is laughing. I kind of, I can be, I can be funny at some point. The <laughs> impish <laughs> smile too. You're right. That impish. There was that fucking that weird like. Uh, I know I'm yeah, being yeah. naughty. Fucking. He, smile. he knew exactly what he was doing yeah. at all fucking yeah. times, yeah. and uh, <laughs> his disdain for authority. I fucking. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, I fuck. I remember one time we would drive. We used to drive down to New York in my piece of shit truck. I had this '83 Ford Ranger, vinyl seats. You know, we leaned all the way to one side because he's like could barely shift the thing, right? 
And uh, I remember getting, we got pulled over by the cops. And I'm just typical white guy. I'm like, I was speeding. Yeah. He got me. Fuck it. And I'm sitting there next to the guy comes to the window. I just see, Pat I can feel Patrice oh. staring a hole through this guy to the point. I'm like, I'm going to get the shit kicked out yeah, of me because, because of you. this. I was speeding. The speed limit is <laughs> fucking 55. I was doing 75. Stop <laughs> staring at this guy. And Patrice goes, he had like this whole coat of honor. It's the way. It's the way he's talking to you right now. Oh, I man. fucking hate these cops. And then it became this whole topic of race on the way down that I don't get it. <laughs> and I was just like, dude, you know, they're kind of dicks to us too. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah, also it's... have to come to the car and be worried that they're not going to get shot. So they have to have, so I was obviously taking the cop side and it was just like, I remember I, I had no saliva left in my mouth. <laughs> like five, you know, he could just out debate you. I think we just, we, <laughs> we just stopped talking by the time we got there. But, but we had this one moment on the trip that we always got a big kick out of. There's this tunnel that you go through on the uh, Merritt Parkway. And we used to always joke that it was this James Bond kind of tunnel. So one time we were going down there through there, and he actually brought the James Brown, uh, James, James, Bond, James Bond. Bond soundtrack cassette. This is how long it is. And he popped it in, and right as we go to the tunnel, I was like, <laughs> and we were driving through. And then when it went, -na 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 -na, we both looked at each other. Like we were in a spy -na -na -na. It became like It became this fucking tradition. Every time we drove down, we'd be in the middle of talking. We both knew we were going to oh, do it. Great. Nobody said anything. And then we would, one time we, we were driving down with Bobby Kelly, and that was the best because he had no idea. And we were sitting there talking, and, and you know, these motherfuckers, blah, blah, blah. and we got to the bridge, and then we go, Shut up, Bob. We popped it in, and it's like going down, 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 down. And Bob <laughs> just starts doing that high pitched laugh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and then we just looked at each other, came out the other side, and it was Bobby laughed for like 10 miles. It was fucking. <laughs> it was, he told me it that was story. Awesome. Uh, it, was, it was fucking. We had so many. Funny. So many great times, man. He told yeah. me about you guys doing that recently. And he was telling me, he goes, he goes, dude, they would drive through the tunnel, dude. And as soon as they hit the tunnel, they'd go, da -da 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 and I go, what the fuck are you talking? What are you singing? No, we put, and we he goes, put, James Bond, dude. <laughs> no, we had it down right where it go. Ba -na -na -na. We both look at you each other. You gotta look at each other. And then when it, when it, when it was like, it was like go, da -na -na. we'd look away back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking cool. That's hilarious. That's awesome. And it, it's like it, a movie. Yeah. yeah. And when Bobby saw it, dude, I'm telling you, he laughed for fucking 10 miles going, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? And it was, uh, <laughs> it was awesome. And then we went down to New York and me and Bobby uh, felt like little kids and Patrice just walked in and immediately started trashing the club owners. And I, I, I was just, and I remember thinking like, how does he think he's going to get in <laughs> yeah. doing this? And then he would, because he just had the, uh, he would literally de pants these guys and they were just like, they're yeah. so used to being like mm. everybody just groveling and Patrice would just come in and just, you know, bring them and down could, to bedrock. He could back any shit up with charm and charisma, mm -hmm. which is fucking like no one has both of those things where you can be a <laughs> utter prick and oh, then be charming. <laughs> yeah, well, we have the prick part, but that charming part, we're all a little lacking. Ah, we're working <laughs> on it. But he was funny. He was almost funny at will. And that was what got him out of it was because yeah. you couldn't argue that this guy is not hilarious like yeah. Yeah, everyone you couldn't he uncomfortable situations he could make people laugh at him mm -hmm. all the time like just start to start trashing somebody where nobody knows him he didn't care <laughs> he didn't give a fuck and then people would listen and start laughing i saw him he trashed one time we were at montreal comedy festival and the original star of law and order really well respected actor he passed away mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. came walking up and i was like all in awe and patrice started making fun of his fucking raincoat and the guy loved it he just, like, he immediately was got... Was that Patrice. Orbach guy? Yeah. The I think, old guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Jerry? Who literally Jerry looked Orbach. like... I think it's Jerry, yeah. Yeah, and that yeah, was the thing. Matters. Like, when people immediately got Patrice, like, that was that was another, like, a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then you immediately saw, oh, I bet this guy breaks balls, too. Like, he totally... <laughs> he, he didn't have, like, uh, that vibe, like, I'm the star of a TV show. He immediately thought it was fucking funny. And then I, then Patrice had that thing that like that's how people didn't realize that's how you got to him that if you actually could laugh at a trash and that then you'd get that that side of Patrice where he he showed you what a big hearted guy he was yeah 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 god damn oh and it just gets sadder by each story it it really yeah. does <sighs> fucking horrible there was some wonderful savage beatings. Some fucking <laughs> verbal beatings and we've all been on the receiving end of them and oh. I don't think I ever got over that that bus beating. About taking oh, right. the bus. You know, and Kevin and, and them uh, came in and told that story. And this is what I never told because I was sworn to secrecy. I got, after that trashing, 
I was still going to do the gig. Because in my world, it was an easy gig. Just to tell the listeners, they were basically you had to stand up on a bus. On a bus, yeah. To Yankee Stadium, and they, they, they pay you like 500 bucks, and you get a free World Series ticket. And they were all Braves fans. So I'm like, that's the easiest fucking gig ever. All I got to do is just stand there. Every time I have a problem, I go, Jeter sucks. Or, hey, look at the tits on her. And I would be fine. But they pounded me so bad for 45 minutes. I was still going to do it because I didn't give a fuck. But in the end, Patrice said, he said, Bill, you're a friend. He goes, I, I can't let you do that. <laughs> he goes, I will stand in front of that bus. Before, before I let you do that. He goes, you, ha you make enough money. Just buy a fucking ticket if you want to go. And I just remember that going like, oh, I should really have some sort of respect for myself. And that's what made me stop. And then I, this is where I was sworn to secrecy is I passed that gig on to somebody else and they did the gig. I'll let them tell it if they ever come on this show. And uh, I asked them the next day, I go, I go, I go, how was the game? He goes, oh, it was fucking awesome. I go, I go, how about the, how was the gig? He goes, dude, it was brutal. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. He goes, he goes, I ran out of shit. We hit traffic. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. Traffic, I didn't take into consideration there was going to be right. traffic going to a World so Series you, game at the Bronx. You had to perform for the whole ride, no matter how long the ride lasted. Oh, it wasn't like you're man. on the I don't think Patrice oh, was, ever, was ever funnier. He said, he goes, so when they bring you up, are you going to come out of the bathroom? Or he goes, are you going to walk up those little stairs? <laughs> uh, the, the, my favorite ones, he said, he goes, he was doing an impression of me. After uh, after at the end of the end of the uh, the gig, I was gonna be standing up, going like, "This is gonna be a visual joke." But you know, thanks a lot, everybody. You guys have been great. And then I sit down with my back to the crowd, <laughs> and, 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 as, and as they all get off, I'm looking over my shoulder, going, "Oh, thanks a lot." Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just one of those things. It was the easiest thing to trash somebody for, and then all the fucking Mount Rushmore people of trashing. Norton was there. Voss was there. Keith was there, little Patrice Kev. and Little Kev. Oh shit, dude! And two of them, oh. I never, I, I never recovered. They literally did a headlining set, <laughs> and it was one of those awful nights at the cellar where there was only it was like like a third full. So there was every, people who didn't even know me were hearing it, and they were either <laughs> laughing. Or I, one girl looked at me and she went, "Oh, like she saw me, <laughs> dude!" And I just was sitting at the bar, shifting my weight, and all I wanted to do from. 30 seconds in was run out of there, and I just, I couldn't. I had to sit, because that's the rules. I had to sit there and take yeah. it through. And every time I thought it was going to end, somebody else would just come back with something else. <laughs> and it just, awesome. dude, I'm telling you, that one, the Eddie Ift. Oh, my God. Was that, that was one. That, were you there for that? It was, was when uh, Patrice, a uh, comedian, Eddie Ift, who's a funny guy, but Patrice killed him one time. They had argued about something. <laughs> And it was so bad. Me and Voss were there, and like literally, we, we didn't even. You just want to jump in on a teasing. We couldn't even jump in on a teasing. It was. It, it felt abusive almost like, to oh, jump yeah, like, in. Wow. Yeah, some, somebody the, joked I don't that, that we need to call him to make sure he's okay. Eddie, I actually, out of everything we said, summed up Patrice in a great way one time. He goes, Sometimes I would walk into the cellar and I would just think, fuck. He saw me. <laughs> 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 Which I thought was exact. Because I used to feel that. I used to feel that, like you would oh, come walking shit. in, and you would literally, like, dude, you used before you'd walk in, you'd look at your clothes, going, "Okay, is everything straight? <laughs> is my gonna, hat? Is my hair messed up?" They're gonna fucking rail me about this oh, one, dude, really bad. I yeah. have closets full of clothes that got retired <laughs> from the <laughs> trashing. And I, I gotta be honest, dude. Like, as much as I do that shit on stage, I'm not that guy off stage. Like Norton and those guys really were those guys, and I used nice to, shirt. I used yeah, to oh, really. Boy. Great. He'd take a fucking pounding down there. He I was really trashing did. some guy's hoodie one night. I forget who the comic was. We're in front of the cellar, and Patrice was trashing his hoodie so bad. And he's going, look at this nigga's hoodie. Look at this nigga's hoodie. Right? And he goes, he goes, take that shit off, man. Take that fucking hoodie off. And the dude unzipped it, and he was wearing, like, a spandex shirt. Oh, underneath. And he goes, shit. put it the fuck back on. <laughs> put it back on, man. And it was like... The, it was like so. It was so oh, fucking fast no. and so insulting. Like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> we were laughing so fucking hard. I love hard. when he used to call like older white people the N word when he was mad at them, <laughs> yeah. and he would talk to them like it was some dude on the street. And they, they, so he would be coming at them like forty different ways that they did not <laughs> handle. You can only see their clothes moving and the pounding that they were taking from the guy. And uh, totally, man. Uh, I never said that, dude. Now that everybody's fucking dropping, utmost respect for like the the quickness you get. Norton has. And, oh, I, and all those guys, man, Jesus they're just fucking Christ, yeah. Yeah, it's just really, a... 
One of my best laughs I ever had was on this show when you you called somebody a zilch. And I literally, <laughs> the way he said it, I swear to God, like three weeks later, I was eating like raisin bran and the shit came out of my nose. I don't know why I was thinking it. I think as you were eating like a breakfast sandwich. I was eating breakfast. Some, there's some sort of fucked up connection. I was sitting there with me, <laughs> and I was eating fucking something. I just thought he went on, you know, one of those Norton rants. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Fucking zilch. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit just came out of my nose. So thanks. Man. <laughs> I don't know. Seriously, dude. Yeah, it was so, the most. Uh, it was the mo moving up to the city with you guys. With you guys already being was one of the most intimidating things you could ever do because you walk into the. You know, you come from the open mic scene in Philly. <laughs> And you go, all of a sudden you're like, it's your first night in New York. You walk into the cellar. It's Norton, Burr, Patrice, Bobby, Voss, DePaulo, Keith, oh, Keith, Keith oh, Geraldo, yeah. DePaulo. I forgot DePaulo. Oh, and you're yeah. just like, you know, <laughs> oh, it's that we're not in Kansas moment, not to use yeah. a cliche, but I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, and just watching that you're just like, I better shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Don't talk. <laughs> Dude, I, I got to tell you something. Oh. The amount of comics who came down there and took one ass beating and just hit out up at the strip. <laughs> And the fucking uh, 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 stand up New York for the rest of their time. And just there, never fucking never came, came back. back down, dude. Like it was a serious caning. They, <laughs> and the thing is, you never really got beaten into the gang. It just, it just, kept, yeah. it just continued to happen. I remember nights. Even Keith. Remember that night? Keith was wearing something, and somebody got him with something so funny. He literally stood up. That's how I got the idea. He literally stood up and ran out of there. And I remember thinking about that bus pound and going, why the fuck didn't I ever think to do that? Why did I just sit here and take it? Sometimes you got to just leave. Like when you yeah. feel the roll starting and you got to go, you're like, I'm out. I bail no out a few. Right? Yeah. But the worst is when like Artie, Artie will like, they got smart to guys trying to run out and they'll block you. Like you'll try to dash out of the fucking spot. Where the fuck you going? Sit there and take your fucking pound. <laughs> Who got me mad one time? I was when I was opening for Dice. It was probably ninety nine or two thousand, and I was at the cellar, and they were killing me for probably for opening for you know, you know right. or whatever they were doing. Oh, yeah, 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 Patrice. Patrice was killing you. What was he saying? I don't remember. Oh, he was saying how much of a lackey Norton was to, to fucking Dice. So he started imitating Dice, calling Jim up, going, "Hey, let's go to the mall." Oh, and was, dude, fucking pounding the table, dude. That was a great smashing. And I was oh, I was shit. overtired because I used to fly home in the morning and land at like six p.m. and then go right to the cellar. And because uh, it was before, obviously, the morning radio. And I'm sitting there. I think it was Patrice that pulled my chair out. <laughs> and I was like, don't touch my fucking chair. Like, that's when I decided to get indignant oh, and angry. Yeah, and now you're I, yeah, I made it real. Like, don't touch my fucking chair. And that just made the pounding worse. <laughs> 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 it just made my beating worse. And I had to take it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Dude, so I remember, like, bro. times of, like, trying to sneak out of there. And you just you literally... Keith would be like, where you going, Burr? You got nowhere to go. Sit down. <laughs> you got nowhere to go. <laughs> and then you'd look like an idiot you'd try to make something up. I got it, y'all. You got an audition for what, stupid? <laughs> You're not getting it. Nobody cares. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Oh, fucking brutal. Sometimes when you're getting beat up, it was fun, though. Like, I literally have been killed by those guys. And you're thinking, like, it is it is fun because I know I'm loved oh, here. Yeah. And I'm getting pounded by some of the funniest fucking guys in the country. It was It was kind of... A weird thing to enjoy, like even when yeah, you were I getting killed. You only, he only, I got upset a lot. He only got upset a couple of times. But I don't remember one time. Like he was always good nature. I remember time Jim was playing chess with Bobby. Bobby's on the phone too. And uh, fucking uh, Patrice is just being just fucking with Norton. And he goes, uh, he goes, Jim, what would you do if I punched? <laughs> What'd you do if I punched you right in this chin right here? And he, and he, and he just started. Oh, and he just started. I don't know. I just watching the way Jim was laughing. I literally learned from you guys because I came from such an angry background where it wasn't done with any sort of love. That's why I sucked at that game because I didn't take it in love. And then I also went right for your jug. I was the guy. Oh, right, yeah. yeah, at least my mom didn't die. <laughs> That's how I initially <laughs> played it. So it took me. The just took everyone out of it. Wrecked the whole Sorry, thing. Yeah, yeah, the whole fucking. Yeah. Bobby was like that, too. Like, and he, But Bobby had a way of saving it. Bobby, Bobby would go for the jugular. And then, then everybody would be like, Jesus Christ, and just go, Bob Kelly. <laughs> Bobby's on the line. I butchered it, sorry. Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Yeah. Bobby. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing, Bobby? How you doing, Bobby? Hey, Bobby. I was, I was at that pounding two bus, Bill. Oh, yeah. You were there for that one? I was, I was I'm sorry. Did you come up to the front, the yellow line, and that's the stage. <laughs> the yellow line? <laughs> I don't know, Bob. I got to admit, it was all kind of a blur, you know? <laughs> I still have brain damage from that one. <laughs> 
That was an ep- that was one of the top. We went over it one night. I remember Patrice was at the cellar. <laughs> that's so funny this, the, that he got kicked out of the cellar and then back in, and then he just refused to play there. That's <laughs> Dude, I heard I didn't I wasn't there for this one, but one an epic one. Bobby got off easy because it was overseas, so none of us saw us. There was oh. something in Amsterdam about a hotel room. You guys went over to do a gig over there. It was you, Keith, and Patrice? Well, I you know yeah, it was Keith and Patrice and me, and it was. Uh, they put us. They tried to put us in this, you know, boutique hotel right in the LED, red light district, but it was really just like, you know, a, a flop house <laughs> to save money. And you know, Patrice and Keith flipped out, and I was just wanted to be a people pleaser, so they had me back to Amsterdam, and I'm like, it's not so bad. And uh, yeah, it had like it had it was a square room, four metal bunk beds, uh. and it had a, a, a five by five window. It's a hostel. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they complained, and I didn't. I told the guy, I'm fine. This is great. I'm, I'm cool here. And the, the guy was lying to him, like, yeah, it's 30 minutes away, and blah, 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 trying to get him not to go. They were like, fuck you. Pick us up. We're out of here. They left. It wound up only being 10 minutes away. It was the nicest hotel ever that they put Patrice and Keith on. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to spend the night by myself in this fucking hostel. I was fucking shitting my pants. And then the next day I come out to get in the van as they're picking me up to go to the show. I had bought a black shirt and black polyester pants, but I didn't know that I bought bell bottoms. <laughs> oh, no. So I came out. I came out of the hostel, and it looked like I had a fucking black evening gown on. <laughs> <laughs> the, pounding, the pounding that went on in that van, I'm not even kidding you. It was so brutal and so rapid fire between Keith and, you know, Keith's laugh and Patrice's laugh. Not only did Patrice hit you with a fucking crazy fucked up, just right on the money slam, his laugh... Just mushed it into your face. Oh, and, and drowned out anything you had coming back with. There's nothing you could. His laugh was like the extra, just foot on the face in the <laughs> mud. And I remember the guy Franz, who didn't laugh at us all week, thought we were assholes, had to pull the fucking van over. He was laughing so hard. <laughs> at the this, this was a French guy too. I don't even think he understood English that well. Then. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I had a, a tear in my eye. Like, I welled up. <laughs> honestly, honest to God, sometimes I got pounded by these guys. Because it's hard to fucking take somebody because they're being so honest with you. I look like I got raped and I was somebody's bitch in prison. I mean, and I fucked up and I was so scared to walk out of that hotel with my fucking bell bottoms on your evening gown <laughs> and then the fact that they didn't even give me a second you know there's some comics you'd be like hey what's up man nice pants and they just talk about you behind your back none of our crew would do that it, it was sometimes that hurt so bad that you i mean dude i, I literally had tears in my eyes and it they, they, they told me hurt. bob they told me that they actually invited you over to their great hotel that they stayed at and then you came walking in and acted like you were going to stay there, and they didn't let you. They made you go back to your <laughs> flop house. <laughs> they said after the thing, Patrice looked back and saw me. My feelings were hurt. He saw that I was legitimately, my feelings were hurt. And he goes, Bobby, you can come with us tonight. And I go, I go, can I? He goes, absolutely not, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was listening before with the, uh, the weight stuff, and I, I really, it just, it really bugs me to no end that Joe DeRosa is fucking saying that I need more help than him. <laughs> the fact that he looks like his body is any character out of a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> Joe really I, is the wild card. Like, Bobby's the obvious choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, like, when you gamble, you always got to bet. Yeah, you always got to pick a couple of upsets if you want to go yeah, undefeated pass. on the card. Yeah. He's the pass line. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're still on the board, dude. I'm telling you. And, and don't forget about that fucking lunatic sitting next to you with the megaphone in front of him. Who, Andy? Oh, me? Yeah, Andy? we're gonna, we gonna save you too, you fucking Howard Hughes. He's not uh, gonna come out of his house one day. Yeah. Well, I like my house. Jesus <laughs> Christ! Nice. How are they gonna find like my house, my beers, and my guns? How, how, and where are they gonna find you in that house when it all goes down? I, I say in the. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Let's see. I mean, that was a logical question. Oh. I know. I know. 
I know. I, gonna who's going to be brave enough tub. to go wait, into wait, the wait, house? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. What do you got, Bob? I, I, it's going to be. It's going to be in the hot tub. There's going to be two young girls dead with him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and there's going to be. He's going to have his fifty cal. Going out like uh, a legend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Anthony's going to be the first person where it's literally from my cold, dead hand. He's going to be dead <laughs> with the fucking gun. Take, <laughs> oh, gonna, it's going to involve some, 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 uh, some, some sort of barricade. When you barricade it into your own house, the word estranged is going to be used. <laughs> Former. A lot of kids. Yeah. It's going yes, down like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hist history of. History of. <laughs> yeah. You're going to yeah, find you in some room. Things. Some room behind a three foot iron door. Sometimes, <laughs> with sometimes food controversial. In it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God damn it. Opie, Opie's going to go in a park. <laughs> I can see him feeding Opie. birds and just keen on. He's going to last a while. Yeah. He's going to last a like, while. But like uh, Michael Corleone yeah, he's gonna at the go, end. He's going to go like Michael Corleone. Three. Hold the chest. <laughs> You, uh, what the fuck? At least that one you live long. <laughs> yeah, that's a good scenario. What the fuck? Obi's gonna Obi's gonna go learn Tai Chi in China. Oh, right then. Oh, well, I guess we gotta go home. Tai, oh, tai right. Chi. Why don't you try Bob. taping it? Right, it's something, Bob. Oh, fucking chip. When is he gonna go? Bobby, you missed the John Jones interview, and uh, and uh, Jimmy took a pretty good fucking hit today. Really? Why? Well, you know how Jimmy likes to try out some of this. John shit. was great, and he gave me a uh, a shin a, kick, a to, shin the kick to my upper right thigh, and 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 uh, Jim Norton's <laughs> color left his body. It. Wait a minute, dude. I'm so sorry I didn't make it in. I I had some problems. That's right. Late last night. Um, he fucking know. dude. It was so bad. Can I just tell you what a fucking moron I am, Jimmy? What? You said yesterday, Jim Jones is coming in. You got John Jones is coming yes. in. Yes. I, who's that fucking? I thought you met Tom Jones, the singer. <laughs> and I was different. like, you kept saying, yeah, you're going to come in tomorrow. You're going to come in. I'm like, all yeah. right, all right. And I was like, I don't give a fuck about Tom Jones. Yeah, it was Johnny Bones. <laughs> Johnny Bones. I didn't know it was John Jones. I'm a fucking moron. He, dude, he gave me a fucking. That was fucking bothering with why. Like, why would Tom Jones check you? <laughs> um, <laughs> he got a good question. Yeah, I was, <laughs> well, it's like, I'm kick you. <laughs> It's like a David Lee Roth kind of showbiz kick. Dude, there's a... Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was like a can-can fucking thing. <laughs> that really is the difference between me and Bob, too, because when he said Tom Jones, I literally was like, ooh, well, that would have been exciting. <laughs> we, uh, Opie Twittered it, and I retweeted it, dude. He kicked me, and there's a better video of it going up. Sam has a better video. Yeah. He gave me a shin kick to my upper right thigh. It was. It hurt so... I, I literally couldn't breathe, and then I had to leave the studio because I thought I was going to throw up. It was a shock to my system. <laughs> I almost fainted from the kick. His and color was fucked up. I almost fainted. I had why, to walk. Why? Why are you into this? Why? Uh, that why? one. That one I would never do again. Like it is a masochistic uh, thing. No, but it's not that. It's 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 just what yeah. what fan wouldn't want to? You get a chance. Well, come every on. Other it's like fan. taking a catch from Peyton Manning or fucking Starbuck. <laughs> every time I sit here going, maybe I'll t nah, nah. Fuck that. He I want to see that make you kind of want to do it. For I know. A second, I, I, and then you realize, then, nah, nah, nah how, no way. How, how big is he, dude? How he's a, he's he? a fucking. Oh, yeah. He literally is sculpted. He's six, out of human tissue. He's got to be <laughs> six five, right? Right. He's deceptively massive because he's so tall. I don't know. Yeah, he's and he's he's uh he's uh, he's a really sweet guy too. Really nice guy. Real right? nice. He smiles a lot, which would really suck when he's beating the shit out of you. Oh, Jesus, he would, Bob. <laughs> he would probably keep smiling, but he doesn't smile when he fights, man. No, they, they were showing clips on TV before of his fucking uh, some of those spinning elbows, and I just I don't uh, understand how people get up to take that. I don't comprehend how a man can crazy. take that to his face. Yeah, that's the worst person is the the, the you know because he's a Christian too. He believe, really believes in God and you know that other side of those people. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's why he brought up Tim Tebow, I guess. How's your leg, Jimmy? I'm trying to see. I've been icing it too, because as per Kenny's, uh, oh. no bruise yet. Yeah, no. he's a he's no a he's a he's a monster. He's gonna <laughs> he be a fucking heavyweight. his fucking little midget Schwarzenegger legs are hilarious. <laughs> Tim Norton really Tim, is Tim, in fucking shape. Those legs are ridiculous. From the They're from the shape. waist down, he is from the waist down from the waist up. I I I literally look like I was just pulled off a clay table. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have legs that are sculpted? Hey, I don't know. 
You know how hard it is to bend it, down in the meat packing district? <laughs> it makes no <laughs> sense. It doesn't make sense. You're, you're right. He's, you have you're half sculpted. <laughs> you have calf muscles that like bodybuilders would kill for. But no, I, I His really belt is too tight. All the fat can't sit. <laughs> sit it's so bizarre. I really do. They fucking they rolling pin my feet up to my cock and balls, <laughs> and I belt it off. <laughs> and then his thighs are sculpted too. Man. Yeah, it's like, very it's good like thighs. a balloon animal that they squeeze the legs and everything <laughs> just. But I'm an unfinished sculpture. You're you exactly don't, right. You don't walk. You work out every once in a while. I lift three treat, times in a row. But then you treat yourself. Oh, yeah. No, no, it's very strange. No, that's genetics, dude. I mean, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Gym, yeah. yeah. I used to hate Gymnetics. those guys in the gym. They lift once uh, and they're ripped. It's like, what? Uh, why? Why what is that nobody? about? Come on. Uh, why did you not get shifted? Because he knew I meant it as a yeah. horrible thing. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> we got a really busy day. We got to wrap up. I would never yeah. say that. Bob, you guys later, man. We'll see you later. I love you guys. Uh, I love you. Bye, 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 Take care of yourself. Bye, bye, bye. Bill, what do you got? Anything? Bye, buddy. Podcasts, anything you want to promote? I'm here for You're good. Yeah. That's it. No, I know that. That's it. You might as well at least get a plug in. What the fuck, dude? You know what? I wanted to tell you. Remember those tweets? Was I showing you those last night? The fucking tweets I got from some people, like how showbiz never never ends. Hey, Bill, sorry to hear about Patrice. I know he's a real good friend of you. Listen, I just opened this room in Reno. It's a three hundred seater. Oh, God. I got a couple of those. Oh, yeah. fuck sorry about people. Patrice. Hey, can you do me a favor? Do you have Kevin Hart's number? Yeah, I would really yeah. like to. Uh, yeah, using your grief to segue into something. <laughs> yeah. Just, Some so. asshole fucking. Now, look, this is hearsay, so if it's not true, fine. But right. if it is true, you're a <laughs> fucking cunt. But some comic, female comic from L.A. supposedly tweeted like, when he died, like, oh, you know, rest in peace, Patrice, something along those lines. And then, like, but I'll be at the uh, such and such. And, yeah. like, I plugged Ugh. their fucking gig off of his. MTV.com uh, did fucking that. Fucking asshole. Really? MTV.com did, uh, they said, uh, they said, and this is, I'm not making fun of any of these people. It's just who they chose to retweet. Uh -huh. They said, like, uh, Charlie Sheen, Aziz, Sarah Silverman, and Nick Cannon all grieved the loss of their good friend Patrice O'Neill. I'm just oh thinking, did we God. not have enough credits? And then, at the, and then at the bottom it said, uh, uh, Vinny from Jersey Shore uh, said it's, it's going to be a huge loss to the comedy world. So they actually used Patrice's death as a way to cross promote cross promote their, their, their show <laughs> come on dude it's oh and Patrice would have laughed his ass off of at course that. yes he would have blown yes. off his blown off his real friend yeah he, he would have what actually enjoyed fuck? he actually would have enjoyed our subtle humiliation at that yes <laughs> that's what you get stupid you're not famous enough yeah, yeah. he would have really berated us <laughs> <laughs> what about Piers Morgan thinking uh, Patrice was a girl that happened his whole fucking career. I remember yeah. I did but, it. But Piers is like selling it like, oh, this is a tragedy. She's going to be missed. She was so this. She was that. Yeah, but you knew that. You know, when the, that, Jim yeah. Norton is the only guy I've ever seen actually reads the book before the author comes in right. and then apologize and says, I'm only up to page fucking 201. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. The other of them just go like, you know, I, I, this book is just, you know, the, 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 I, thought I, it, I the just back, thought the back cover. Yeah. yeah they I, don't. I thought Piers was just a little different than the rest of them. Like he, I don't know. Right. More thoughtful maybe. Yeah, or, yeah man. Nah. We had him in and in the end, he's just like the rest of these. He was fun. He was a fun guy he to hang with for an hour. He didn't fucking I mean. know him. And may believe he did. Joe, let's not promote Caroline's then. This is about Patrice. Sorry. You'll have to come back and promote um, that you're going to be at Caroline's the 14th, 15th, and 18th. Yeah, you wouldn't uh, we do can't do it today. Joe, you're, you're we too, can't do it today. You're too much of a guys. man, Please, Joe. please. Yeah, don't, don't, don't mention do the House of Comedy in Minneapolis. No, don't do it. Not no, today. No, no. <laughs> not today. But any other day, you're more Out of respect for Patrice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Out of respect for Patrice, I will say this. I will be in Doylestown <laughs> this Friday and Saturday. And not only should you come, you should buy my merchandise. Why? It's what he would have wanted. That's right. True. There you go. Hey, um, That's true. Tomorrow we're finally going to breathe, and uh, e -Rock has, like, bonus Patrice stuff. Okay, Another good. five hours of Patrice tomorrow that he couldn't fit in the weekend special, so that's going to be great. And um, we'll see you guys Wednesday. I just wanted to, I want to tell you about some yes, big Sam. news, though. Porn sites are moving from the .com to the .XXX. <laughs> yes. You know how difficult it is getting a .com name these days? Patrice loved porn. Yeah. If you're going to start a .com like porn. porn site, it's almost impossible to find a memorable name. Uh, that hasn't been uh, taken already by someone else. That's why you need to go to www.buy.xxx. B-U-Y. Uh, triple X. Right now, because it's unbelievable what the domain names are uh, still available for you to check out. Think about it. 20 years ago, people probably laughed at the guy who bought up uh, collegegirls.com with the new triple X domain. Now there's a second chance of uh, being the guy who gets gets those names first. As of September, uh, December 6th, that is December 6th, anyone could buy dot triple X domains. Think about it, huh? If you got a clever dot uh, triple X name, check availability at 
www.buy.triplex. That's www.buy.xxx. Yes. And uh, you know what? I don't even care. We're going right up. Is all those? Are you kidding me? You know the holidays are always about <laughs> bringing people together. Uh, yeah. The love of everybody. Oh, Joe. Catch you later, man. Ah, it's all right. Huh? What, what do you want from me? Bring the people you love together this holiday season with a festive mini Christmas tree from Pro Flowers. We love these things. Have mine set up in the uh, in the house. It's beautiful. Little lights on it. This week only, get Santa's Workshop mini Christmas tree for just nineteen ninety nine. That's nineteen dollars ninety nine cent. It's fragrant tree and it comes with free festive tin uh, in a festive tin with free colorful lights, twelve free wooden ornaments for you to decorate it with. It's an amazing value. Or upgrade to a larger angel and snowflake ornament with uh, white lights for just $10 more. The mini Christmas tree would be a great surprise for kids, friends, co-workers. It's an amazing mini tree. It sells out every year. So order right now before supplies run out. Here's uh, how you get your mini Christmas tree for just $19.99. Call them. 1-800-PRO-FLOWERS. 1-800-PRO-FLOWERS. Mention OP or go to the Pro Flowers. Um, or proflowers.com, I'm sorry, and click on the microphone in the upper right-hand corner and type in OP. proflowers.com. That's proflowers.com. Click on that microphone in the upper uh, right-hand corner, type in O-P-I-E. Don't wait. The offer expires at midnight on Friday, so order now. Oh, yeah? Well. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? How you doing there, Iraq? I'm doing good. Anthony, how are you? Well, uh, you might not have heard this, but uh, there's big news happening. No way. Yeah, porn sites are moving from .com to .XXX. <laughs> you know how difficult it is getting a .com name these days? Very. If you, yeah, if you're going to start a .com porn site, it's almost impossible to find a memorable name that hasn't already been taken by somebody else. That's why you need to go to www.buy.XXX. That's buy.xxx right now. Because it's unbelievable what domain names are still available. Check it out for yourself. Just think, 20 years ago, people probably laughed at the guy that thought to buy collegegirls.com. With the new dot, uh, triple X domains, there's a second chance to be that first guy with those great names. As of December 6th, anyone could buy dot triple X domains. Uh, think you've got a clever dot triple X name? Check availability at, at www.buy.xxx. That's www.buy.xxx.